This is the story of a beautiful place known as the happiest place on earth. And all of its history, its secrets, and its tricks that you may find if your mind believes in design. And you allow your heart to believe in magic. Step inside and become a citizen of Disneyland. Greetings, fellow citizens of Disneyland. Bricky here. Today, we're going on an ordinary adventure. But before we get started, I want to welcome all of our new listeners because I'm happy to report that last week's episode, episode 68 with Katie and Spencer of Best Life and Beyond was our biggest episode ever. So I want to thank those two for such an amazing conversation that so many people said they felt as if they were sitting right there next to us. And to me, that is the greatest compliment I can ever get for doing my job. So thank you to Best Life and all the new folks that have hopefully come back for another serving of Disneyland for Designers, our weekly podcast that is always focused on telling the story of not only the park, but the people that make the park so special. One of the things that surprised me the most about going to Disneyland over and over again and moving out to Southern California is there is a community behind this theme park. And that community to me was just as attractive as the magic that built the park. Coming up soon, the return of Jared Maruyama, hope I said that right, celebrating Alice in Wonderland's 70th anniversary, 70 years of Alice and her influence on Disneyland. And Philander Butler will be returning with the complete history of the Jungle Cruise and a review of its future. Of course, that one we have to wait for us to get back into the jungle to see all of the additions and plusing that has happened on this opening day attraction. But before we get back into the parks with those two episodes, next week the creator series continues with Dylan of Theme Park Obsession coming by to not only share how he got into becoming a YouTube creator after being a cast member, but also his love of roller coasters, his love of theme park design, and a little forward-facing armchair imagineering as Dylan and I look to the future of Disneyland we each have a couple of different takes on what Disney Ford could mean for Anaheim and Dylan is the perfect person to have this conversation with so if you've ever been excited to learn more about Dylan after watching his popular YouTube channel next week will be the week where you get to hang out and sit next to Dylan and I recorded inside of my car inside of the Mickey and Friends parking structure. It's gonna be a fun conversation because we're literally gonna be getting all hyped up on Disneyland right before we go in and rip the parks together. But today we are joined by Peter and Kitra of Ordinary Adventures with what has become the fastest growing Disneyland YouTube channel. And not just Disneyland, they have really adjusted the focus of their channel to almost become like this lifestyle channel that caters to people that really love pop culture and theme parks and, you know, that sort of experiential part of society, which as the malls have all started to close as online shopping becomes bigger and bigger, real world experience is going to be, I'm predicting, the next wave of the future. Something will go on the road and take over all of these empty malls and Sears stores spread across America. Real world experience. I believe is that next level of consumerism and experience that will document this time period. You already see it happening in major cities all around the world and it's just a moment of time before these ideas get packaged up and shipped out to middle of America. And what a great place for Peter and Kitra to be because they have adjusted their what started out to be a channel about Disneyland and Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. They've really adjusted it into being almost like a little bit of a business, you know? And even though they don't like me saying that and you'll hear that in today's interview i do see them as running a business because they have really sort of maximized their efforts diversified the labor that they share amongst each other and have really taken ordinary adventures into a, like a humming machine that is always where that next big theme park thing is popping up but as well as being able to slide back into other pop culture moments that people just want to be a part of but when i see the growth of their popularity it doesn't surprise Surprise me. Peter has already won at the internet once before with Slash Film, which is a major entertainment website. And uh, he knows a thing or two about the internet. He's actually been helping me out with some things because he just has a really great vision for making the virtual product. He can just kind of focus in and see this thing that doesn't really exist. Like, can anybody hold a YouTube video in their hand? I mean, you can hold the SD card, but that's not the YouTube video. But knowing the internet is only knowing half the battle, just like G.I. Joe. People have to like you 
and people really seem to love ordinary adventures and i think it is because they are quite simply ordinary and i mean that in the best usage of the word and let me break that down before somebody tries to get some sort of beef going between us they are ordinary in the way that they don't have this rock star attitude they don't come off with these big personalities they're just like many of you they're theme park fans they're movie fans they're pop culture fans they're fans making content for fans and i think that's important I think that's super important because so many people can relate and see themselves inside of Peter and Kitra, not only as individuals, but as their relationship. And when you start a YouTube channel and you come up with the idea that you want to put out X amount of videos a week, it can become a lot of pressure because there's not always a new attraction. There's not always a big announcement. There's not always something new to catch everyone's attention. So sometimes you'll see creators get into things that they really don't care about just because they're trying to hit whatever goal they have to get X amount of videos up per week, per month. I don't merch like merchandise just isn't for me i like to look at it i like to touch it i don't buy it i don't collect it i don't know where to put it i i'm just not wired that way but peter and kitra they don't just buy the new lightsaber because like oh this will be views and this is what we need to do to get tuesday's video out they buy the new lightsaber because they need it to fill their soul their shelf and their hearts would be empty without it and they need to give that lightsaber a home <laughs> i love doing these interviews face to face being inside of their beautiful well-decorated home showed me their insane collection but it also showed me the path of their popularity you see they represent the ordinary fan the person that just loves the park the person that enjoys all of its foods and loves to buy its merchandise it's as if Disney's dream customers started making a video series documenting exactly how to consume the parks, the treats, and all of its toys. I think being genuine has been a really good look for Peter and Ketra, and why so many ordinary folks, people just like them, have decided to subscribe and always go on their ordinary adventures. And if anything made today's conversation a little bit difficult, it was actually trying to get them to talk about themselves and their success. Sometimes success can make people feel uh, clearly uncomfortable, but we got there. We got to a great conversation and I'm so excited for you to hear it. But first, let me remind everybody, if you want to support my content, you can become a member of Club 1313 over conveniently at club1313.com. Tomorrow night is Cars Land the Movie. We're going to get together and watch Cars Land the Movie. I know it's not really called Cars Land, but to me, it will always be Cars Land the Movie because I've been to Cars Land hundreds of times, never seen the movie, I'm watching it tomorrow night for the first time with members. Next week on the 13th of the month is our members only live stream, which are always a lot of fun. Would love to have you in the stream with us. And on the 26th is 13th, 13th DCA day in the park. Can't wait to hang out with some of my club members and just have fun being together, loving this park and getting to consume Avengers campus together for the first time. All right, let's get started with today's episode, episode 69. I want to thank Ordinary Adventures for inviting me into their home for having this conversation even though at times it made them feel uncomfortable and i i really want to celebrate them for just winning by not overlooking the obvious people just at the end of the day want to see people that they can relate to do all the things that they wish that they could do such an easy thing when you look at it in reverse and with someone who suffers from big personality syndrome I have to admit, there's a part of me that is jealous. It's Ordinary Adventures on Disneyland for Designers, episode 69, made possible by Club1313.com. Peter and Kitcher, welcome to Disneyland for Designers. Nice to see you, friends. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having us. It is so exciting to get to talk to you guys because what I really enjoy about what you all have done is you got into a space where all of a sudden your Disneyland content really started to take off quickly. And I find that amount of tremendous growth to be inspirational, that it, that it can happen. 
but it wasn't an accident because you guys stumbled upon something. You saw a little bit of growth. And what I identify with the most as a fellow creator is you guys have really taken ordinary adventures and you're treating it like a business, right? Like you're running, I mean, you're still very entertaining and we're gonna get into your personalities, how that works. But the thing that I see in you guys that I admire the most is the commitment to quality. The production level keeps going up while I'm setting up the recording equipment. You're even like, Bricky, do you think this is a crazy idea to make this part of our business more efficient? And I say, no, it's not. <laughs> Just because it's YouTube, it doesn't need to be amateur hour. And I love your all's commitment to making it better and better every single well, time. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I will say, I don't know, I, the word business makes it like, I, whenever I think business, I think like, oh, they're, they're in it for the money or whatever. And like when we started doing this, um, which wasn't that long ago. Yeah. How long ago was it? Like two? I think it's a little years? over two years. That part's so impressive. Well, we just planned on doing it like one video a month. We didn't not, know what we were doing. Which is the perfect way to get <laughs> yeah. into something. Exactly. Yeah. And what, what, what happened was Kitra had this job where she was taking care of some animals mm -hmm. uh, for someone. And uh, that job was going away. And she transitioned into doing uh, She was. Do you want to tell the story? I was doing Uber Eats. <laughs> or I was doing Uber too, but I did not like it. So I was yeah. doing Uber Eats. Uber Eats feels yeah. a little bit more safe. Yeah. Yes. You drop it off and run. You don't have a psycho I had sitting a behind you the whole kind time. Of not, nothing too terrible, but just a few incidents where I was like, you know what? I'm going to stick to the food. Yeah. You were like, this could go bad yeah. quickly. And I'd never see it coming because I'm just driving while you're sitting behind exactly. me. Yeah. And oh. so you decided that you needed to get into something else? Yeah. So she was doing, she was doing that on the side and we were making some money on ordinary adventures but like really nothing yeah and the pandemic hit and driving and going places and picking up food and tra <laughs> yeah. you know passing it off to what people. could go wrong <laughs> yeah it sounded like a bad idea yeah so we we, we launched this patreon to like basically because i already have a full-time job right um running slash foam and so we, we, you know, and nobody, I don't know, we, we really had to fill the void of like what she was making on Uber Eats, which wasn't that much, mm -hmm. was, you know. Was, yeah. yeah. So you had a modest goal. Yeah. If we could just replace yeah. what you were making with the YouTube channel, then we'll be in a good spot. And luckily our, our followers, I don't know, I, I, I think we, like a lot of the creators you probably talked to during the pandemic, uh, you, me, you know, all the Disney YouTubers filled a void that was there of like people were used to going to the parks every week. Or, oh, 100%. And uh, thankfully, you know, us badly making food at home in our kitchen <laughs> so, somehow filled a void and people were able to join our patreon and become part of this community it became that's the weird thing i when we started doing these videos i was like oh we're going to create these videos and put it out there and some people will watch it and yeah whatever. i didn't expect there to be a community well i guess yeah. when i say the word business yeah i'm not meaning the word business like hey you guys figured out how to make a lot of money okay. off of going to disneyland that's not what i'm implying at all i still got a full-time job oh, good because i do too <laughs> i'm still a full-time podcaster which is also another make-believe job but uh it's not but what I mean by business is that you guys exude a level of professionalism. Okay, where, that, that, I, that I appreciate. Yeah, and, and you know, when I say running it like a business, it's like, yeah, you know, all of my friends that are in bands, they still love playing the music, but it's the business that gets you out on tour, right? It's the business that makes it to where you guys can go to Hawaii and, and shoot some videos or go out to the East Coast and, you know, see what's happening in those parks, come back here and cover these parks. Like, I admired how you guys were like, there's something here. If we follow this, we can not only have a really great time, but it can start to support itself and grow. And, and I think that you guys really put a level of professionalism into things and, and slicked it up that I was looking for in this space. Because some of the content is a little fast and loose, and that is a good spot for YouTube. Yeah. But like you and I, Peter, we both come from the entertainment industry, and there's just a certain level of quality. If things don't hit that benchmark, I'm like, what am I watching here? You've <laughs> gone live every week for five years, and you still like look like a monkey taking a rocket ship to the moon every time you go live. That's yeah. so true. 
the the worst I, I was saying to you before is like during the live stream when the person puts their finger on the screen to like go back to find a chat or super <laughs> and, and the fingers covering the camera so you're like I don't know it's, and you're a guy like <laughs> but you're a lot like me where you go okay <laughs> I looked back at my video and you can see my finger on the screen. And by the way, we've done that when we're at the park. Sure. I don't know how you do it. I, I've already had this conversation with you, but we've tried live vlogging in the it. park. We can't handle it. It's too much. I think it's <laughs> incredible. Like there are some things we'll get into today where there's two of you. Yeah. So I'm sure the division of labor makes it awesome. <laughs> but I think live streaming IRL, like in an environment yeah. like blazing around Disneyland, it's a one man show. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it is a one man show for me to rip around there to do what I want to do. Uh, but what I like though about you guys and where I feel like we have a common bond is that if you went home and you watched back your video of you scrolling your finger, you're like me. You go, I need to put an iPad in front of me. I need yeah. to have a laptop next mm. to me. Or what I do when I know that I'm going to be scrolling through the conversation, I just find a really beautiful spot at Disneyland because there's a couple of them. I turn that camera on so you're watching the Mark oh, Twain go by that's smart. while I'm scrolling in the background. You know, luckily that phone has two different views this on it. This is why now. you're the master. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I just, I really enjoy all of that. And so when you guys were getting into this, you guys caught a early wave of, of really dedicating your channel to the opening of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in 2019, correct? That is true. I'd love to say that that was calculated, but that it was... was not. Uh, so when Galaxy's Edge was opening, I, I have this site called Slash Film, which uh, is a pretty popular movie site. Yeah, and we were invited to the opening of Galaxy's Edge before it was going to be opening to the public. So you were there the night with Harrison Ford. And Actually, I was there the yeah. Next so we weren't there day. that night. We were there the, the yeah the next day. Okay, I got to pack up my stuff and go. <laughs> That's not that impressive of a story. I know. <laughs> yeah, we weren't there with George Lucas. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. So you're there the next night. Uh, yeah. Still a good night, though. Yes. Yeah, it was still awesome, and there were still VIPs there. They're like, there were still, like, the Game of Thrones creators were there, and, like... Yeah, because those guys uh, were going to get a Ben series. Schwartz was in front they of us. Yeah. There was yeah. a bunch of people there. If you watch our video, like, it's like, if you look in the background, it's, it's funny, like, spotting this stuff. But um, for years, I had covered theme park content on Slash Film because I was I, just a huge theme park uh, fan. Mm -hmm. But I was like, you know, no one's going to want to read an article about this new land there i mean i we'd usually cover it and ketra would take the photos and i would I'd write take the, really bad photos <laughs> <laughs> yeah we didn't have a good camera those we did i just don't yeah. know how to use it but um so i was like you know we've always talked about doing a youtube channel let's do a youtube channel so we can cover this for the site for the youtube channel and we'll show it visually yeah and we'll cover it that way but then as you know they had like those those um reservations mm-hmm and every one of our friends is Star Wars fans and every single one of them got a reservation and put us on as a guest because so many people hit me up that day and go Bricky I put you on my reservation and I'm like <laughs> oh man that's so awesome I appreciate it and then out of the side of my mouth I was like so did 20 other people but it was great because I just kept getting back in yeah. and yeah. back in and back in because people were like there were six of those and people were like oh I know four people that really want to go but oh, Peter and Kitcher, I'm sure they'd like to go there too. So. Yeah, we went a lot the yeah. first. I mean, we've gone a lot in general, but the first couple of weeks, like we went so many times. I think we had six or seven reservations in that first like three weeks that they had. And we filmed a video every time that we went. Right? Perfect. Yeah, and we were just like, let's do it because it's going to be harder to get in there. So let's show people right what it's like. And to be honest with you, a lot of people think that like because it was on Slash Film, maybe it got more views that way because we got it in didn't. there a day early. Can I say this though? <laughs> that video was probably the least viewed of our galaxy's edge videos the one that we got there in there the day early well i thought like when we started our youtube channel because he has like a little bit of a following on twitter or whatever yeah. i was like oh we're gonna have so many like subscribers right away yeah. and we definitely slash film has like millions and millions of readers but those readers are about <laughs> film they're not about they, they don't they're not all about disneyland they don't want to see you guys go to a luau in hawaii <laughs> and make a pot yeah but let me just stop for a second though i often kind of hear in your voice where it's like uh, you know um slash film got us to the opening of avengers campus yeah and i don't know if you feel maybe like uh you know oh i just want to explain to everybody how we got here because youtube doesn't get a media day yeah you have worked your butt off building that business you have already figured out one way to crack and get in the internet 
if that helps out this project, I would feel oh, yeah. zero remorse about that at all. Because you've already worked, you've already laid a solid foundation for ordinary adventures. You know, if my podcast can help me slide into anything, woo, well, speaking of I'm Aven- sliding in that spot. Speaking of Avengers Campus Media Day, I wasn't invited. I mean, because of the pandemic and stuff, I think they were really limiting it to just How many like, people could be there? Yeah, but they're also like, I don't know. So we had to really fight for me to come because we're like, this is kind of like our thing. Right. And like, she needs to be there to do this and whatever. So. And l- thankfully, the Disney one publicist like saw our video and like, I guess, submitted it to her boss and was like, look, this is what they do. Finally, they were like, okay, you can come. Hey, Disney's <laughs> difficult in that regard. Yeah. yeah. Really yeah. difficult in that regard. I've had to you know, really go on bend the knee to get exposure to a couple of different interviews or talk to some people or go someplace. Like it doesn't, um, it doesn't happen easily with them, but Mark, I'll tell you, I, Disney will fly me around the world to go to the set of like a big Marvel movie and yeah. interview yeah. Robert Downey Jr. Like some of their biggest stars put me up in a hotel, you know, er- like everything. And, they won't let me drive down to Anaheim <laughs> with you, our annual you, pass. You, when yeah. use our annual pass when we had the annual pass to go in there to experience something. Just so a we day get or, like a better seat for the parade, so we could film it. Just so we have like a better view, so people could see it easier. So it's funny. One whatever. part of the company is like, "Here, have yes. whatever you want." The yes. other part of the company is like, <laughs> "I, I had car- you, you, you're, you're not a mommy blogger. You, you're yeah. Not, but- <laughs> well, it, I think that that you're maybe not a TikToker <laughs> that might change though because. There's so many thoughts going on here. Let me just break a couple of these down. One, over the pandemic, I think Disney realizes that we did better than they did on keeping the magic alive. And I know for 100% certain, and I know you guys do too, a lot of cast members watch Disneyland YouTube content. They don't just work there because they're rich. (laughs) They work there because they really are emotionally attached to the place. And on the Avengers Campus opening day, I had a couple of executive level people be like, Bricky, what do you think of the land? I'm like, how do you know who I am? And am I getting ready to get kicked out? Like literally <laughs> inquisitive because they watched my channel. They wanted to know what I thought about it. And then Disneyland park president, um, Ken, Kenny P rocks. I'll say his real name. I'm not afraid to say it. The poet, he walked up to a lot of YouTubers and was just like, you guys having fun. And he didn't officially say it, but it felt like, you know, happy that you guys are here. Thanks for what you guys did. You know? And I just feel like, There's something happening right there where they're starting to realize that there are, you know, a handful of creators that are working really, really hard to tell their story in a way that they're not capable of doing. And so I do feel like that open invite might be around the corner or they might just be a little bit more open to things. But at 100%, I know what you did with Slash. That is an amazing accomplishment that I'm sure you're completely proud of. I don't see how that's anything that you should ever be like, oh, you know, I got in here because of oh, my movie. But I, I do want to say that like with Galaxy's Edge, for some reason, it, it just didn't blow. <laughs> it didn't help us. Slash helped us get in. Sure. But that video didn't even go like really anywhere. But um, it was your first video. I think or, it was like our third video. We, we did a few like tester videos before that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was our first like, all right. Well, you know, some of us might have it's done not a, a good video. Some of us might have done a couple hundred videos before we got one that caught. So it's always kind of that thing. But what I would say to you guys, this, I think the reason why the channel took off, like slash film, yeah. no doubt about it, just like with my podcast and my connections, yeah. it'll get your foot in the door. But people aren't just going to watch the video because you have a popular media website, right? I think the thing that is taking you guys from getting your foot in the door to having one of the biggest audiences in the space is your relatability. I think you guys come off incredibly relatable and and you guys have mastered a skill set that I don't know if you're aware of. You guys can both get information and couple small talk inside of a very (laughs) narrow window where you're like walking up to the gate of something and Kitra goes, now these passes are what you need to get in. And you go, man, I feel like I'm getting sunburned over here. Did, did you bring the sunscreen? And then she'll be like, yeah, it's in my bag. And then you bounce back and go like, so just wear this bracelet and you'll get in and you can charge your room, your food and all your stuff. And I watch it and I go, yeah. they have mastered information and random couple chit chat inside of the smallest window. Cause on YouTube, it's gotta be edited fast. Mm-hmm. And I think you guys have really made something where people can sit at home and see themselves in the both of you. 
and I think that, that your commonality with the audience, because I do listen to uh, the Saturday night or Sunday night lives that you guys do. Yeah. Listen to it like a podcast. Look over occasionally if I need to see the <laughs> Christmas tree in the background. Nice. But I think that you guys, with the way that you communicate with the audience and the way the audience reacts to you, I really do feel like that has been a big part of your popularity where, unfortunately for me, I just have to prove to people I'm just a dude that loves Disneyland and I'm not a creepy guy here by myself. <laughs> like the fact that you guys go through things as a couple, I think that that really makes people at home go, oh man, I wish we were doing that. You know, the fun that you guys are having a couple, I think that that reflects back to the audience at home. I'm really bad with compliments. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> and, and and that's probably why I like to like diffuse and be like, oh no, it's not because of our, our personalities, <laughs> our relationship. It's because we had this one video of, building lightsabers you know the day galaxy's edge opened and then when that somehow went viral and then everybody watched our other galaxy's edge videos and then they hit subscribe and it has nothing to do with me mark but viral it has nothing to do with us but viral happens on yeah. minutes viewed right yeah so while people you had first access you might have been the first video up at savi's building a we lightsaber weren't. Okay. Yeah. Even better That's for my funny we, part. We, 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 even we, better for my we, argument. We, we we got home that day from the first day of Galaxy's Edge, which we wasted most of that day waiting in line to build the lightsaber. Yeah. And we didn't even post that video first. We posted a you and know we opening even, day of Galaxy's Edge. We weren't even Edge. originally going to do that that day, but a lot of our friends that we were with like really wanted to do it. <laughs> so we're like, okay, we only have four hours in here, but we'll, we'll waste like two and a half of them doing this lightsaber. And it ended up obviously being an amazing experience, but like. I don't know. And then that video just like blew up. Yeah. We posted a few days after it opened. I don't know. So like, I don't know why. Yeah. Okay. I'll go with you. What you're people saying. are just searching for lightsabers. <laughs> but I think the part that I think the part that you guys are being modest about, though, yeah. is the reason why the video goes viral. It could be it's one of the first lightsaber videos. Yeah, yeah. We can agree upon that. Not the first, but one of the first. <laughs> yeah. But it's the watch time. It's the amount of time people are able to watch it, which means there's a likability there. And I think that the likability comes from the level of professionalism and the fact that you guys have a really interesting way that you communicate, which I've said to you before, Peter, like it, you guys sometimes are like a couple to the stereotypical definition. You're, oh, yeah. You're in Hawaii and a guy gives Kitcher this like basket and the immediate thing my wife would say is like, I'm taking this home. And you don't even look up. You're like, how are you going to fit that in your bag? Yeah. And I'm just like, that is like, the most- why are you wearing about that right now? That is Who the cares? most relatable couple moment. That's not going to fit in your bag. <laughs> and, and you know, you, there's a lot of those little moments and I love that you don't edit those out because that's real living. And, and and I think that that I think that that shines through a lot. Yeah, we get a lot of comments, or at least I do, that are like, "You're just like me. I want to be your best friend. We're like exactly the same person." <laughs> it, it, it's hard though because sometimes you want to edit those things out. Sure. Sometimes, like when we went to Hawaii, uh, I'm not sure if you watched this, but we did one of our food tours mm -hmm. of. Uh, I guess it was not the North Shore. It was the other one. Are you one. talking about the chili pepper water? Yes. We, 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 did you see this? Okay. Yeah. Dude, I watched every Hawaii video. I was stuck at home. I was like, I'll watch anything that's not in Southern California. We were we were in line at this place, the Rainbow Driving, which is famous. And yeah. And they had on the, the, they had a sign that was like chili pepper water for sale. And it looked like a bottle of water that was yes. like a red water. And the guy in line next to us, I was like, oh, look at that. That's interesting. I recorded it. And the guy next to us in line was like, oh, yeah, I drink that. We drink beer and we chug that it's good so we bought it and i mean it turns out it's just hot sauce it's like a, the hawaiian version of hot sauce i was so in the zone though of like oh we get to eat this food and we're in hawaii and blah blah, blah that it didn't even the multiple like layers of it being a hot sauce bottle i like did not <laughs> understand until and people like i don't know if they think it's fake or whatever it was a hundred percent real yeah uh, it, it, it was not fake number one number two after she did it she's like this is not going i was like this is not people are gonna make I was fun of so us for years we're gonna be roasted like, whatever no, I was like, man. No, this, has to go into, this is like totally a vulnerability yeah vulnerability it, it makes you seem human you know <laughs> and if you if everything is edited to be a highlight reel that makes you look like a hero there's definitely an audience for that, but I think with the numbers that you guys have built and with the community that you've built, I think you have to put down that level of vulnerability. And I think to also, there's a little bit with you guys where you guys kind of represent like this ideal lifestyle of wouldn't it be nice if we could do what they're doing, you know? And I know that you guys don't, 
you know, uh, try to, you know, front too hard or, you know, whatever the, the be flashy yeah. with it. But I think there is a lot of people that go to jobs that they're, you know, there for insurance or there for a family responsibility and seeing a couple, you know, go out to all these various theme park things and dipping into this, this and that. I think that does add a little bit of like fantasy to the YouTube channel of like, man, you know, it wouldn't it be fun to do what they're doing. So I'm going to pin, I'm going to get away from compliments because I see it's going to end up being me talking. Yeah. And let's get into and you this. You'll see how, how uncomfortable I am with compliments. I just like to always. You're doing great, sweetie. <laughs> well, this is the way that I look at an interview, right? Yeah. Some of your audience is going to be hearing this. Yeah. And I think we'll it's, share a, it. I think it's important. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I think it's important to help you guys tell your story to them and realize some of the things that maybe is subconscious or, or that exists in a way that they haven't really thought about before. So with you guys putting out this many videos, who's booking the calendar here? Uh, it's kind of a joint effort. We have a Google doc where we put kind of ideas of things or that you want to cover stuff that we're like, Oh, this would be cool if we did that. Like, for example, when we went to Hawaii, we had like this whole list. We didn't get to do everything. But like, it is somewhat planned of like, okay, we want to go do this and this and this. But yeah. If, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, it, it, it's not the planning of it. I don't think is that exciting. Um, it, I, I mean, I do realize this is one thing. I'm not good at looking at our videos and figuring out what's working, what's not. Like hearing you talk about us. Gives me more insight. Yeah, because I don't know what we're doing. Dude, than, I, than I could ever <laughs> looking at us. I don't watch my videos. You don't watch your own videos. Yeah, yeah. But, but I watch other people's videos yeah. and I see like, why why do I like this? Why do I not like that? Why whatever? And that gives me insight into, you know, it's not about copying what they're doing, but it gives me insight into like what I'm doing, what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. 100%. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to start to interview fellow creators because I think so many people watch this content. Like, there's a lot of people consuming this content and I don't think that everybody thinks about what they don't see. You know, the mm -hmm. booking the trips, the balancing a calendar. And, you know, it's one thing to fly out to the East Coast to go rip a new roller coaster the day that it comes out but there's a tremendous amount of pressure to get that video up as quickly as possible so that you can catch the interest of people on that because yeah. you know you guys are in a good spot where you don't have to be first because keep people do care about your opinions and they'll still click play even if you're two or three days late because they want to see how you all experienced it yeah. oh yeah that's what everyone tells us all of our supporters they're like it doesn't matter you know, when you post the video, like when we went to Festival of the Arts at Epcot, we posted that literally like with a day before the festival ended. Yeah. <laughs> Just because we really wanted to go. We had never been. They're like, it's not about like, we might have seen a bunch of videos on this already, but we just want to see you like doing this thing or whatever. I think that's the biggest compliment a YouTube channel yeah. could get. That I don't expect you to show it to me for the first time. I genuinely just care about how you experience it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm willing to get a contact buzz or a, a, a relationship to the item or event as you guys experience it. Like I was laying in bed one morning going, I can't believe I'm watching a water park video. <laughs> I won't even go to a water park. Not even a Disney water park. Video. No. You weren't even watching a Disney water park. Oh, I was watching one of like, knots. <laughs> yeah. It was like a parking lot with pools thrown in it. Yeah. But it was somehow, I'm like, this is actually entertaining. And, it, you know, I know you guys are professionals, but I was questioning the subject matter. And I'm like, I'm going to hit play and see how long I can go on a water park video. When I got to the end, I was like, son of a gun. I actually made it to the end. And by the way, that video not shot with our like you know that's iphone camera it was sh shot with an iphone and a gopro yeah which i always you mentioned the professionalism of stuff looking good like that th or sounding good or sounding good that that's like where i feel like i'm uh at my best is trying to like shoot the b-roll and making oh, yeah. stuff every week it's like a new thing in the mail it's like look at what i got and he's so excited <laughs> to show me i'm it's like it's a new diffuser cool. and, and, yeah. it might, and, and it might be overcompensating because i don't feel like people are coming showing up for my personality or whatever but she brings the personality and she brings i do yes oh thank you <laughs> and then she edits it and, and makes the mess I shot into something that actually looked Yeah, that's a big part of it. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think that um, 
I think there's a lot of personality from both of you in the videos. And there's a third personality, which is how you interact yeah. as a couple. Yeah. Well, we complement each other. Like, I always say, like, I would never be able to do it by myself because I'm never the one to really hold the camera. That's all him. Yeah. And then he, like, with the Avengers Campus thing, it's like, he's like, I don't want to go by myself. Like, I need you there with me to, like, do this. So we, like, have a good balance with each other. Oh, absolutely. And I think that the couple aspect of it is very attractive to people you know um everybody wants to do something with a best friend and seeing you know ultimately a good couple is about being best friends so i think when you guys do things together i think that relationship makes it really fun and when i watch your channel it's one of the things that sometimes I'm like man it would be nice to have a number two you know what i mean like next to you to be like hey what do you think of how this thing tastes yeah. you know the <laughs> other thing about it though is and we watch a lot of youtube uh, not just Disney, but else. You know. Oh, yeah. You got to watch other channels on other subject matters to sort of see, like, what am I missing in independent? Like, what can I take from the YouTube stratosphere and bring it into my world? But here's the one thing I notice when I look at Disney. It's a lot of white guys. Oh, it's not and, diverse uh, like, at all. I, and I fit into that category. You fit into that category. And, like, I think that is a benefit that we have this channel is not a white guy. I mean, it's a white woman. But it's... It, it represents, you know, that's half of the Disney demographic. Not, and it, that wasn't coordinated. Like, we weren't like, we let's do... We just happened do- to both like Star Wars and both like... <laughs> <laughs> and that's things. also what happened is yeah. like, we were watching all these Disney YouTube channels and it's channels we like. You know, like Tim Tracker, we were watching Adam, mm-hmm, Wu. Mm-hmm. Um, and as much as they went to Disney and were covering stuff, it, they didn't represent us in like our intro like we're obsessed with like marvel and like i totally get a that. lot of the U- disney youtubers right. don't even like you know they'll they'll watch black widow two years from now and that's fine like that's fine that's totally fine and sure. that's like whatever but like i want i was like wh- where's the youtube channel that's kind of like the us surrogate that we could watch whatever and then- yeah no I, I think that you guys you hit that uh, perfect niche of you are the people that collect. Yeah. You know, you are the people that don't just buy the merchandise for the thumbnail. You actually have a collection. And I enjoy yeah, and we're sitting in the middle of <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> and you know, when you guys buy the newest saber, I really enjoy your interviews or uh, not your interviews, but your reviews just because it's from a collector's perspective, you know? And and I know that you guys try to, you know, be positive where you can. But when one's not perfect and yeah. you're like, I, I really want to like this, but it's a little light. It's not worth the money. <laughs> this one, you know? And I just think that you're absolutely right. Like you do represent that faction of the crowd that goes there that, you know, you guys are maybe Star Wars and the movies first and the park is a place where you go to celebrate it. Whereas me, I don't know anything about any of the Disney movies. I just love the park yeah and i know the history and the design and the construction of the park better than most that's cool. and so that's where i focus because that's my passion that being said it's great that people can watch your video and you can make that perfect reference to you know one of the worlds that you're versed in but as far as uh, diversifying the content uh it is awesome to see a couple and to see you know more women doing it uh, right now on the west coast we don't have hardly any is, solo is, female is channels there a solo female true, huh? a vlogger other than like super enthused out in disney world like i, I there's danny 702 oh, yeah. 702 i'm sorry and I, there's I, jackie super enthused yeah, yeah. and out here at sort of a level that i'm aware of I mean, i'm sure there's an independent smaller creator somewhere that i haven't stumbled yeah. across there's a bunch of couples there's yeah. couples but there's not really a, a woman ripping the park solo and like that's uh, a missed opportunity it is a like, huge missed opportunity i feel like there's someone out there listening all right, to us right so now. i'm leaving you all <laughs> <do my> own <laughs> thing. no but i really feel like there's someone out there listening adventures. To us that like <laughs> has been worried about going out there and filming themselves and making you just all you need is an iphone i'm not, I'm not saying it's easy it's not easy it's no not. It's not I, would, I would never be able to do it by myself yeah. but uh i really do think there's a missed opportunity there I, I do think there's a missed opportunity, but I also understand why that opportunity isn't necessarily being reached for because I have a YouTube channel where I do Disney stuff. My wife has a YouTube channel where she puts oh, up does she? That's cool. food recipes and stuff. 
and people are brutal to her as a woman no. like the meanest stuff like you know she's sleeved in tattoos as well nobody has ever said anything about my tattoos in the comments yeah. people all the time will be like why did you ruin your body your arms look like an old oriental rug <laughs> like i mean there's just a greatest hits of insane things that people have said and you know we're talking about going to a water park kitcher i think for you as a woman yeah. i'm sure you guys had i want to wear a bathing suit on youtube like i'm sure there was a conversation about like do we want to do water park videos do i want to get into that and yeah i know you probably like were conflicted or debated that but what happened on the next live people were like i loved your bathing suit where did you get your bathing so suit positive because you know i'm a plus size woman and that was another not only that i'm a woman in a bathing suit but I put on a lot of weight. I've always been a bigger gal. So that was like, it took a lot to kind of overcome that. I'm a very self-conscious person. Um, but just doing it and putting it out there has made me feel a lot more comfortable and just like stronger is like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I don't care what people think. Like, I'm just going to go and have fun. I mean, I think that that is a huge attraction and not a detraction to the channel because I think there's a lot of people that can identify with that yeah. and probably appreciate the transparency we're just a normal couple like, I, I yeah. think your normality yeah. I think your normality has a lot to do with your popularity I mean Peter when I see you get into a ride and be like can I fit in this can I ride yeah. this ride like yeah. That's probably not a, a, a comfortable moment oh, for wait, you it definitely isn't but like I feel like we need to normalize that because you know I, I, I like a few years ago before I met her I went to Orlando and I went on the Harry Potter ride and I got up to the front. Well, first off, your problem is Harry Potter, but go ahead. I'll listen to this. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I'm a hater. She's a what? Hater. I don't like that little witch, but keep Come going. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll talk after. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk later. But I got all, <laughs> like, with, with all my friends, I was there on, like, a honeymoon. Like, not my honeymoon. It was a friend's honeymoon. Yeah. It was, like, a group. <laughs> Before I met <laughs> Kitra, I was on a honeymoon. <laughs> couples. And in front of all my friends, I, I did not get on the ride. And it was, like, the most embarrassing I bet. thing ever. And I it wasn't even like I was that big. Like I, you know, Universal I'm, just has smaller rides. Which yeah. Is, but yeah. Hey but, man, uh, like, but, but that it's that, hard to fit in these things as an adult sometimes. Even when you're tall, like, yeah. it's not even. It's yeah. But Disney doesn't seem to have that problem. But anyways, <laughs> enough shade for Universal. But I, I feel like I, I've talked to enough people to know that that's a thing. But like people don't like talking about it. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna put that on there because that's what I when I, when I'm going up to that roller coaster or whatever that's what i'm worried well, about. We i'm not worried about the like me freaking out upside down on the roller coaster. i'm worried that I, i'm gonna get up there and be embarrassed in front of everybody well, yeah that. we went all the way to orlando to go to on Velocicoaster, and we were like <laughs> worried up until the second he got on the ride that like i was gonna have to go by myself by the like, way please i don't want to go by myself <laughs> like, please your face in that thumbnail i blacked out is legendary i blacked out i mean i've gone back and watched it and i'm like i don't remember any of that it looks like a skeleton version of your face <laughs> like it is insane when we do the pandemics next so year I, when we do the pandemics next year that alone inspired me best thumbnail of the year <laughs> and that's got to be one of the nominees uh, wait are you gonna have to rename the awards or is it gonna be pandemic oh there'll be another pandemic don't worry about that uh, <laughs> i know we got the delta variant we're fine uh, but no i think that that level of vulnerability and relatability because not everybody's the perfect shape not not everybody you know goes through life looking like a billboard model uh it, you know in the city they live in and when I saw you on the, I think it was the uh, Secret Lives of Pets, yeah. you were talking about the cart size or whatever. And then once again, here comes the community. I remember when you guys did your live, people were asking you like, hey, you know, like, what is it like for people with a larger size frame? Like, can I ride this or whatever? And you giving that information to them, like one, it takes a lot of courage to put that into a chat. Yeah. But for you to have a conversation, that makes that person feel heard. And I think that's a huge service that you guys have provided. Just being like, this is literally who we are. If you want to go on adventures with us, let's go for it. You even apologize that your opening graphic characters aren't maybe true to form. Oh. <laughs> well, when we, we hired that art artist, Audrey Eastock. Um, she did a really great job. Yeah, yeah she, her stuff is really good. Yeah, she's amazing. She does a lot of like covers of magazines and stuff. I don't know. I think it was like at the beginning of the, or no, it was actually before the pandemic, but like, I don't know how we got her. But she did the sketches, and I even when she did the sketches, I was like, "Can you make us like 
like what we actually like because they were like really skinny. I was like, right, a little bit bigger. And then when she made it, like it still wasn't. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Well, so let's do this. You you got the popularity, like what got the channel like out of the water was yeah. covering Star Wars and being there early. And as we've hung out before at the parks and talk shop, you said you know we got a lot of Star Wars fans. Do you guys feel? any sort of responsibility to make sure that you keep covering star Wars content to keep that section of the cr- the crowd happy, or do you not let the crowd sort of dictate where you go? I feel like a little bit of both. I mean, we obviously love galaxy's edge and it's, it's beautiful. You know, it's one of our favorite, favorite places to go, but then it's like when there's a new lightsaber, it's like, we want to be there to like get the thing to like show the people. So it's, not that it's a burden, but like during the pandemic, you know, it's hard to get a reservation and you got to jump through all these hoops just to get there. And I don't think we're doing it at this point, but before it was like, you could count on one kind of like Star Wars video a week and then the rest will just be like, whatever. Mm-hmm. But we're not really doing that anymore. Yeah. But that was kind of like our mindset for a little bit. I mean, I still do that with my podcast where it started was rooted in design and freelancing. Mm-hmm. And I've definitely gotten very far off that topic. And you're like, don't worry, I'm yeah. still going to talk about it. But exactly. Yeah. Like, I just don't want the the first people that helped me turn this into a career feel deserted. And many of them are like, Bricky, we stopped listening for design a long time ago. We yeah. just want to hear about whatever you get into. <laughs> yeah. But I do feel like a certain responsibility that these are like the core principles of my content. And I feel like I should deliver to all those audiences. And I know that Star Wars was kind of the thing that like got you out of the gate. And I was interested to see, do you feel like you have a responsibility to Star Wars to keep that going? You know, here's the thing is I do feel like there's a responsibility because there isn't many other galaxy's edge channels out there and it is authentic to you guys and there are like dano yeah we actually and love it <laughs> yeah. sir james and uh always believe yeah, always believe and um who am i forgetting uh rex and around there's other that, that, <laughs> that's yeah. a great name <laughs> yeah that, that there's there's other channels that concentrate on galaxy's edge or star wars um but we all have like we all do it differently which is cool yeah, yeah like sir james just he's all lightsabers Mm. You know I mean, like, mm. and Dano's Dano, like all droids. We're not really droids but, and toys. Yeah. We're like, vlog, you know, we're one of the we're like vloggers. the food. <laughs> yeah, you hit it for more of like a lifestyle yeah. edge. But um, I do feel like there's a there is a responsibility when something new happens there for us to to go cover it. But at the same time, I don't think I ever want the channel. We've talked about this, like, to be something like we're doing it for the views or for like we did this thing the black kyber challenge i'm not sure if you were people love that time, where yeah i was trying to get a black kyber tr- uh, crystal you open the red kybers and i don't know what the odds are but we had to go through 20 or something <laughs> spent a lot of money <laughs> spent a lot yeah. of money how much is one like fifth 12 15 yeah oh, tax, wow. and what we did yeah. is every time we went to galaxy's edge we bought one right and then people started coming up to us and giving us them and we would open them. Oh, that's it became, great. It became this big thing and it was awesome and people were really following this like challenge and then I, I eventually found it. When I found your channel that was had already been going mm-hmm. and I would see that happen and I'd go, I don't understand <laughs> the genesis of we this. We should have so explained like, it better yeah. each time. We tried to like go quickly through it, but yeah, it's, it's tough to like bring people. But I think, it's, I think it's cool when people walk in when you don't actually know everything that's happening. Mm-hmm. It's inquisitive and if the people are good and personable, then you'll dig and figure it out. I remember the first time that I watched uh, Felix PewDiePie. Yeah. I was like, what the hell did I just walk into? <laughs> but it was entertaining and I cared enough to figure out what Lawai meant and I you know, went on that journey. But anyways, as you were saying. Yeah, and then um, after that, like we asked the fans what they, or our viewers what they yeah. wanted and they wanted Kitra to go find one and she found one in like five or three. Yeah, I found one really quick. We found one really quick and then like we had this conversation like, should we keep on doing it? Should we go there and like, give it away to someone that comes with us we had like all these different it. ideas and of like, like how to do know, it just stick it, that would just be doing it to do it like so I found you, it. she found you, you it you got like, to the end of the journey yeah, and it was we, done and we got over. to the journey and i think we could have got could we got more views by doing another challenge sure yes. sure but like that's not you know no i totally get that because as a as a creative um i'm always look like i love disneyland and I look at it as this beautiful set piece that's at my fingertips. And I'm constantly racking my brain to figure out 
what can I do in there that hasn't been done before? Yeah. Like what's a diff- what's a different way to make people fall in love with the park and literally get done with a 10, 15 minute video and get that rush that is being at the park, you know? And so just like you, if like I've been addicted to the half calf or the black calf oh, drink. I haven't had it yet. You still haven't had it. And I made a song for it. <laughs> and I've done the cold brew drink song like three times. It's good. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to have to go there and do that every, you know, I'm not doing it every single time. Yeah. And, you know, one time I told people when I was live streaming in Avengers Campus, if you get it to like 300 likes, I'll sing the rest of the video. And so I did Avengers <laughs> Campus, the musical. Oh my God, I have to go watch and that. And then the next time, and I was wearing a Doritos gauntlet because oh, no. I couldn't get to the place that was selling the actual gauntlet so I ate a bag of Doritos and just wore the bag as oh if it God. was a gauntlet Amazing. but that being said I'm not going to go there next week and because I was in Avengers Campus people were like when are you going to start singing I'm like Ew. you're like that already happened we don't do it every time yeah because one it's when it's unexpected when it's a natural curiosity, it's good content. When you do it again, you're overplaying your hand. So I totally get you being like, the crystals ran its course. We need to do something else. But also like on, on, on that hand, like we were there on opening day of Avengers Campus. with we, we were there on the opening day of Avengers Campus with you. Mm-hmm. And we had reservations for the next day. And, and we already had like Avengers Campus content up on the site that was doing amazing. The your most Avengers viral- Campus content. Blue. Yeah, I don't up. I don't know what happened there, but it was cool. And we could have come back the next day and filmed another video and rode that train. Rode that train. <laughs> but but we, we were tired and we were gonna have to go to Florida and I was like, yeah, you know what? I think we got it's we also we a got. small train. There's only so yeah, much. Yeah, I was of like, we were do. in here all day. I don't think there's much more to yeah. <laughs> to do. So yeah. like I don't know. It, it is a tough call because on one hand, we aren't doing this to put something out into a void where no one's going to watch it or listen to it. Do you know what I mean? No, like I mean, you're not creating this content. Just, f- I know you have a club 1313. Thank you. And, uh, they're, they're a great community and we have some of the same members in our community. Uh, and I know that you're trying to please them just like we're trying to please our community, but you also want more members to join the club. Oh, and, 100%. Like yeah. gr- I, I'm in a spot where I'm under a tremendous amount of personal pressure to grow this to a point where I can justify all the work. My business partner in this world is my wife, you know, and (laughs) this is making some money, but there's definitely a spot that it has to get to stay around. And so I'm working around the clock because I don't want to have to stop doing this. I'm having a lot of fun, but oh, that pressure on what can I do to get people to watch? What can I do to get more people to tune in, to go on this adventure with me? That pressure is real. And I'm not afraid to admit that. Like, I want to have fun. I'm not going to do things that aren't fun. But the goal is how can I have as much fun with as many people as possible? And that's not an easy thing to do. So for you guys that you do the Disney parks, but you also do Universal, you also do Knots, you also do interesting things like the next time my niece is here, we're getting up early and we're going to Funko. Oh, and yeah. She's going to love building a Funko. That I is said like an so. attraction in itself. It's so fun. So how do you guys figure out what fits under the umbrella? Like how do you kick the tires on the idea to make sure that that fits for you guys? Well, we kind of like showing people like the whole reason why we're called Ordinary Adventures is kind of, we're kind of like showing people like the most exciting parts of our life. Mm-hmm. Like we were talking before this and he's like, you're like, what do you have going for this week? And we're like, nothing. Like we just are chilling. Yeah. yeah. So like it kind of pushes us to like, not that like we are, like you said, we already enjoy these things. Like we love Funko. We've been to that Funko store before, but like, I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling. <laughs> I feel like I'm not doing a good job. When you showed that it. though, it was weird because my relationship with you guys is through theme parks. Yeah. And the way that you cover things that are non theme park is with that same kind of enthusiasm and professionalism. So normally if I saw a thumbnail, like we made, we made ourselves at the Funko store, but like skip, but because I trusted you guys, I was willing to go on the adventure with you. And it was actually like, that looks really, really fun. And I know that my niece, the next time we fly her out here from New York, that would be something that she would love love to do. When people are like comment and they're like, I never knew that was there. Like we have to do that yeah. the next time we're here. I mean, when we started this channel, it wasn't 
we knew there was going to be a heavy, heavy emphasis on theme parks because we love yeah, theme parks. That was our thing. But we also thought it was going to be collectibles. Magic. And- travel unboxing yeah unboxing <laughs> we had like a list of stuff yeah the one thing i do not want to do is unboxing <laughs> i do not enjoy gifts at all they make me feel awkward like i have zero social anxiety <laughs> but you put a gift in front of me i'm like oh great I, I don't know what to do i'm kind of the same way but like it's so fun when we do get like mail and stuff and like a little kid like draws a picture of like gizmo and but what do you do with it afterwards and, oh we have a I need to organize it better, but we have, we keep everything and I want to eventually get like, I don't know. Good question. Cause I want to get like folders or something yeah. to put them in right now. They're just kind of like in bags. Cause people will come up and give me something and it is so sweet that it literally like chokes me up. I know. And I go home with it and I go, that was such a special moment. Now what do I do with I this know. thing? Yeah. And that, what do I do with that thing? It literally burdens me. That's why I don't collect anything because I don't know where to put it or how to, like it feels like a burden. Meanwhile, sitting inside of the pop culture <laughs> museum right now, you guys don't seem to have that anxiety. I kind, I've kind of reached a point. I know you haven't, but yeah. like every time I like buy something, I'm kind of like, oh, where am I going to put this? It's kind of like one in one out sort of thing for me. <laughs> like, I don't know. (laughs) But it seems like you guys do a really good job of doing things outside of what you're known for. Yeah. But really keeping it to feel like, if I use this word, forgive me, on brand. You know, like it feels like, oh, why are these two going to see Slayer? This doesn't make any sense. (laughs) You know, like everything you do seems to kind of fit the overall umbrella. And I also think what's important is that when you're doing those other things, you still feel like the same people from the parks. Yeah. Well, we... When we went to Hawaii, we thought people might follow us for that. Like our community might follow us for that because it's Alani and that's Disney. And yeah. there's a connection there. But we did a bunch of stuff there that had no connection to Disney and no, uh, you know, we went on these food tours and we. Uh, oh, the food. Were you guys like so trying good. to fit meals in on the way to the airport? Yes. <laughs> we, yeah, that. we went to a really nice Hawaiian restaurant, like, oh, and we almost were late for our flight, but it was worth it. <laughs> D- Hawaii is so expensive. But some of those food yeah. videos are like our most viewed videos out of Hawaii. More well, than not even that, like people from Hawaii found us that way. Well, that's awesome. Like it wasn't just like our audience. Like it was like I'm from Hawaii, and you're right. Like this is the best shrimp truck, or like whatever. <laughs> and, and you mentioned about how Disney is seeing vloggers and seeing the value in that. We were told by someone in the park that they're going to Oani. We have so many people come up to us and like, I'm going to Oani because yeah. I swear to God, we probably <laughs> sold like so many Oani <laughs> uh, vacations out of it. But they called Oani to like see what there was to do around the island. And Oani was like, check out this YouTube channel. They will show you like the food. Isn't that so cool? It, that's very cool. <laughs> like you also said last weekend that you've heard of cast members before sending people over to your keto blog post that you did as a directory of where to eat keto at the park. Like I really do think that there's a relationship forming where the parks understand the importance of us. And I don't know how much of this that I can say, so I'll keep it fast and loose. But uh, I was one of the lucky people to be at the park randomly when they did a soft opening for August Cantina. And that was the day that stormtroopers came oh. into the cantina for How the first fun. time ever and there was a uh, something that was set up in there where like Oga talked to them and they had like a little interaction thing and I know firsthand that the fellow vloggers and I that were there that those videos got sent to corporate so they could see what it looked like, how people reacted to it. And so that to me is an interesting sign of the times um, that you know they're it, for a while, it's like they're just turning a blind eye to it. And now I feel like there's enough people there that consume it that there's a little bit of a, we're trying to figure all this out. And they definitely, with the way that they're programming Disney+, Plus, they're definitely looking at what's happened on YouTube and we're like, we need a show like that. We need a show like that. You know, like the show that's coming out, which is going to basically be like a defunct land episode about every uh, single attraction oh, per episode. Watched- but I definitely believe that with the way that they're programming Disney+, Plus. You can see inspiration from successful series that exist over on YouTube. So they're aware of what's happening in our yeah. space. They're but always watching. They are always watching. And I mean, <laughs> I, if I owned a theme park and there's people running around with cameras, oh, I'd, yeah. be, I'd be keeping tabs too. Yeah. I often wonder if there's somebody who it's their responsibility to watch it all. 
Oh, yeah. That'd be <laughs> such be, a right? fun job, I feel. There has to be. There has to be somebody that... Although I don't know how some you intern, that like... Because, like, especially in Walt Disney World, it's all live bloggers. Yeah. I know you do some of that here, and there's a couple people that do that here, but you go to Disney World, and, like, you can't... Look it's a giant live stream. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going out there in uh, the end of September, and it's going to be interesting to go out there and to to do that and be a part of that. But uh, I don't know. It, it's definitely. It seems like there's a relationship forming, and I, I hope that there is because I feel like what our community does is we add a lot of value to what they do, and um, I'm hoping that when annual passes come back that there is a tier in there that makes it easier for creatives to to buy in at a level to where you know the stories can keep going me too <laughs> me too. <laughs> right now it's super expensive when like a lightsaber comes out in galaxy's edge we need to like be on the website refreshing to try to go to a reservation it's not just one yeah two, two of us so two park two, tickets yeah, two tickets expensive. expensive and a lightsaber so we're investing a lot of the money that we're making back into creating the next video. Yeah, but part of me also, like, not that we took our annual passes for granted or anything, but, like, when we spend so much money on a day ticket, like, I feel like I need to suck all of the juice out of Disneyland. Totally. And, get, and I, I feel like I shouldn't feel that way, but, like, it, that feeling hasn't gone away yet. Like, I feel guilty if I'm leaving at, like... 6 p.m. and I don't stay until 9 p.m. or like whatever. We were never there at Rope Drop. I know. Well, I know. Except for like for maybe when Rise of the Resistance came out and you had to be there. I can only do Rope Drop, rope drop for like the insane crazy days. Like if, yeah. if you're not there at Rope Drop, you're not getting into Avengers Campus. Yeah. Those days I have my strategy of I get dropped off by Uber over I on all planned. the eastern <laughs> side. But as far as just like going there as a fan and getting there by Rope Drop, I do not enjoy getting to the park first thing in the morning. Same. I like to go at my <laughs> own honest, leisure. Same. I like to go at my own leisure. I like to get there when I get there, but I like to stay to the bitter end. Yeah. We were half day people <laughs> that would go there, you know, get a meal, go on one ride, walk around, look at merch. Yeah. You know, we were the, the annual pass holders that they probably hated. They probably hated. <laughs> Although, no, we spent money. Every time we were there, we, we weren't the people that went there with the food and, you know, didn't spend money. We, we Every time we would go there, we'd spend money. Well, not only as an AP would I, it's you know, if I'm just going for my weekly rip, I'd spend a little bit of money. You, know, you always buy a snack or two. I wasn't keeping yeah, them in the business. Food is so good there. You but I think eat. what the AP really did well, though, is when I would recruit in family from out of town and take them there. And then when I was entertaining my family there, there was no budget on anything. What do you kids want? Where do you want to eat? And it was just spin, spin, spin because yeah. I love seeing people have fun at Disneyland. Like, Let me sh take you over here. You got to see this. You got to try this. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I have the park down to such a science when my nephew was young. I got him over to the Jedi uh, training area, you know, in the Tomorrowland Terrace. And I was, I knew exactly where to put the kid. So he would get to fight both Darth Maul and Darth Vader. Yes. Like he got both of them because I knew exactly where to put the child. I'm like, you stand here and don't move until anybody tells you that. to. And I like got him to fight both of them, you know, because I had it dialed in like That's that. Awesome. Those are the type of things that you learn when you go there all the time. So with you guys in the channel, um, is there, are you, do you try to hit a certain amount of videos a week? Is there like, do you just do it when it's right like how do we manage the amount of content uh so currently we try to do three videos a week some weeks and does that include your life plus the live so i guess four videos a week so monday wednesday and friday is that's what we try to do schedule. sometimes it's tuesday thursday sometimes it's not yeah the days and we try to do it you know a specific time every day which we're usually pretty good about like a release time yeah do you give it do you guys ever do premieres and watch with the audience we did that for a little bit during the pandemic. We haven't tried it since. Yeah, I love doing that. Yeah, that's fun. That was we started doing that before. I think we started doing live streaming, and it was like cool to be in there and like be chatting with people. And then we started doing our live stream. It also kind of gives you feedback on yeah. scenes and moments that people react to. It's like you're sitting there and you're like, "Are they going to laugh at this? Are yeah. they going to like like yeah. this part? Are they going to be?" bored at this part does like it's like so much pressure that i'm like are they gonna like the job that i did editing this i spent so long editing this are they liking it <laughs> well the thing i've always learned is the part that i think is the best of a podcast or a video 
is never the part that yeah, the audience thinks is the best. True. Like, I can't believe that's the moment that you guys are gravitated towards and you're holding on to yeah. as like the takeaway <laughs> moment. And after we're, after I do a premiere with my audience, I'll be like, I think I need to adjust the thumbnail. Like, I think that's the attraction inside oh, of this yeah. video. The you, feedback that you get. Yeah. I think that the premiere is a really cool way to be a fly in the wall. And you know, you've heard this, Peter, with all your interviews, people in Hollywood love to stand in the back and watch an audience yeah. watch the movie. It really does help inform you about the final product. Just they don't make four movies a week like you guys do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, anyone who does a daily vlog, I'm so just like, I don't know how they do it. Cause it's not that it's a struggle to get three out or four, but it's like, it takes so much time. And I mean, of course, I mean, yeah, but people who I think there's daily. a lot. Also, you don't have the reliance on, like, we, we're, le- even with three days a week, it's hard, but we're at Disneyland, you're at Disneyland, you, there's less pressure on you because you're at this cool place that has a cool storytelling and you get yeah, to Yeah, so explore. during the pandemic, that was harder <laughs> to do three a week. We're like, what are we going to do this week? Mm-hmm. I don't know. And then the pressure's on you. You're yeah. in the spotlight. You're making, you're 100% responsible for the content. So oh, I yeah. feel like that's what the daily vloggers have to worry about more. Yeah, my pandemic days of walking around, virtually walking around inside of a Google Earth map of Disneyland, <laughs> those were wild days. But, you know, I think when you go daily, um, you create a real connective tissue with your audience is that now it doesn't matter what you're doing, it's the ritual of you doing it. So if we break down somebody like Adam the Woo, for example, uh, there's certain production things that he just doesn't even placate to because of the that weird cycle that he's on is that he lives a day edits a night uploads the yeah. next morning he's got so, it down to like a rhythm he does and so there's a lot of like fancy things that he doesn't need and it doesn't matter what the topic is because it's just like a ritual of i watch adam every morning with yeah. coffee I so like- if he does a 10-day road trip with his dad you're like uh, this is pretty weird and by the end of you're like i love his relationship <laughs> with his dad i'm such like a perfectionist though and i'm really slow at editing still like i'm i'm learning constantly it takes me a very very long time to edit our videos and i will watch them back over and over and i'll see a little blip or a little something that i have to like fix which i maybe i need to like stop being so anal about it but i don't know i think you're doing a good job what do you use you use uh we use adobe premiere me too yeah I've talked to a lot of fellow creators that are editing on their phone. I don't, I don't understand that. That just saying that sentence gives me anxiety. It's such a little workspace. No, I and you're don't like, understand. you're dragging your finger around, and like my fingers are fat, so I'm always going to. I, I meant to hit this button, and I'm hitting that yeah. button. Like I need Premiere. I need the big iMac screen mm-hmm. maxed out. Like I need that I need, room like, to create headphones. Like one hundred percent. Like when we edit on the road, sometimes we'll do that. And like, I always forget my headphones and it's like always takes me twice as long. So I'm like, I need my headphones just to like get in the zone to like, you don't have a yeah. mouse. I don't. Yeah. And I, I like a mouse. I don't like using the trackpad. <laughs> yeah. When I have to edit from my laptop, Ugh. it, it feels claustrophobic Yeah, because I'm just used to the bigger computer, the bigger okay, I'm screen. Glad I'm not alone. There. Oh no, yeah. not at all. Uh, I find that, and this is, we're getting into the minutia here, but the most difficult thing about editing not most difficult thing but the thing that takes up so much time is making sure that the sound from clip a to clip Mm -hmm. b yeah that constant gain yeah thing that you drop down there so that it has that flow when that little trick works it's great but when you're like i gotta sliver a little off here i gotta sliver off there like most, like the sounds bleeding into the other thing. No, yeah, you can still <laughs> the word that I'm trying to like my messed up word is like bleh, bleh, into yeah. the next line. <laughs> like people wouldn't even know if there was a pop there. Yeah, but I will spend an oh unlimited amount of time trying Ricky, to get that perfect. We're like kindred spirits here. Like, <laughs> like I'll notice it when I'm watching other people's videos. I'm like, there's a pop. I oh, fix that pop. <laughs> or when you know when you've been editing and there's just like that one little sliver from mm. a clip that's no longer there and you see that like visual like oh, boom, boom. Man, yeah i watch back my videos just to try to find those moments yeah because if you're just editing like it's all good and you hit upload those will be hidden yeah. in there <laughs> um but the, the editing though what i enjoy about it kitra is it's the moment when you see it come to life yeah. right a, an extra second here start the music there go like you're literally crafting the emotion of the video by just 
sliding it this way or that way it makes it funnier it makes yeah. it sadder it makes it more emotional like I love that part so Me much. Me too. It's so fun to be creative in that way. And I love picking out the music and I'll put something in and it's not quite right. I'll try something else. I'll try it sooner in the video or later. And you're right. It is where Peter likes to film a lot of B-roll too. So I always have so much to choose from, <laughs> which I'm like. She says that like she doesn't like it. No, I do. <laughs> but it's like he has a vision of like, sometimes it's just totally random and I'm like, Okay, but like other times it's like, okay, I know where to put it or whatever, but yeah, it's fun. Because I'm solo, I don't even, con- I'm so focused on what I'm trying to do mm-hmm. that b row just like escapes my brain. Like if I happen to like film something, I'm like, oh, I have the train just driving by. I should probably use that. Yeah. But like I'm so mentally like onto the next thing, onto the next thing. Do you ever take your you know shots? What? Go like, ahead. It, it, Doing it solo, I think, would make it easier because you know, you what know you wanna... the intention of why you shot something. Mm. You're like, oh, I'm going to shoot this to put this picture of the, the iPhone because I want to put it over <laughs> me talking about the iPhone. <laughs> but then, then she funny. gets the footage and she's like, why is there well, sometimes a... Sometimes I'll go to the bathroom or I'll go get like a cup of coffee and I'm gone for like 15 minutes and then I'm looking <laughs> at the footage the next day and he films so much in that like space that I'm just like, what were you trying to like, what am I doing here? <laughs> Uh, when I'm doing the edit though, I'm trying to get it concise. Like I'm trying to get it to where it's interesting. And I know that's what we're all trying to do, but do you mess with your timeline? Because I will definitely go, this part's interesting, but it cannot be the first minute and a half. It's not catchy enough to be in the first two minutes. Oh yeah. I mean, we don't do that every video. Sometimes it just flows nicely, but there's so many times we'll pluck certain parts and put them in different parts of the video yeah how do you guys because he'll come up and he does the second edit so like i'll edit and then he comes up and kind of looks at it oh that's maybe and maybe like well like he puts like markers in premiere and is like i always have to like guess i'm like what do you want me to you want me to put like a photo of a dog here like i don't know what you want but so that's kind of nice you know the tough part is when you are shooting something and you forget to film the story and by that i mean you didn't know it was going to be part of the story like uh we went to downtown disney to uh before the pandemic to look at halloween merch yep and she wanted to get this lounge fly mickey uh pumpkin bag it was like all the rage and we knew that we were going to show like all the halloween merch and that was what she wanted to buy and she said in the beginning of the video like in the intro that uh that and then every place we went or actually, we weren't just in downtown Disney. We're in Disneyland going around. Like, no, this looking wasn't at all- during the pandemic. This was like yeah. when we first started our channel. And um, at no point did I film her like looking for the mm. the bag. And it turned out like we didn't end up finding it that day. Uh, but I, I started filming that late into the video of us looking for the bag when it became like a thing of, oh, it wasn't at this store. It wasn't at that store. It wasn't at this store. And we actually had to move parts of that earlier into the video so that it became a running search. Do you know what I mean? Like, so oh, it yeah. made a story because we just thought we were going to find it and show it and be like, look at this cool bag. I'm buying it. We had already made up the story in our heads when the story was in reality was not that. The story Such was an us. interesting story. No, well, no but I know, I know what he's saying though, because <laughs> yeah. you have an idea of what you're going to shoot, mm-hmm. but then because Disneyland is a cyclone of chaos, <laughs> you know, yeah that the story changes as you're there. So I try, I in my phone, I keep a list of like, these are the things that I want to hit today. And I try to have a plan of how I'm going to stitch them together. But like what you're talking about, Peter, I also try to stay loose enough so that the day guides my adventure, you know? Yeah. And I try to also, if I've done something recently, that's on the do not do it this Same. video list, right? Like, yeah. Last time I was there, I rode Big Thunder Mountain. You won't see Big Thunder Mountain for a while. Same. You can't I'm do the, the same exact stuff. Exact same way. And it's like, yes, we go on Rise of the Resistance a lot or whatever. But like, I'm exactly the same way. I'm like, we just did this like a month ago. Like, we can't be. We gotta like do something different this time around. And even though there's like vast options there, trying to figure out how to give people an original 15 to 25 minutes, it's hard. Yeah. It's it, and especially, and I think it's going to get. My projection for the park is that this summer is the summer of chaos, right? <laughs> yeah. Fireworks are back. 
soon Fantasmic will be back. We're probably going to get something to happen in the Halloween season. We're going to get Christmas. But then when we get to 2022, the, everything will have be back, right? Like everything will come back online and they're not going to be making a bunch of new stuff. So I think that the difficult season is next year how to keep it fun and how to keep I it exciting think of that. because like right now it's a it's a crap shoot every time you go there what's new and what's happening i think next year will be like a catch up year for disney that's going to be the year when yeah. it's going to get really really interesting to lean even more into like what have i not done here yeah. yet like what's an original story that i can tell yeah, that's very true i like how you're able to like you looking at the design elements of something you're able to I mean, every time I walk through galaxies, that's where I see new stuff and notice new details. And sometimes I'll be like, oh, I think that's new. And then we'll, we'll go back to our yeah, original video. It was like, there. Nope, we talked about it before. <laughs> every time I ride Pirates of the Caribbean, I swear to God, that hasn't been there before. It's been there for 60 years. That's funny. But I love that you'll look at design things and you might not have the Imagineer who created it and know the intentions. Like I talked to you before about that um, in the Black Spire, that tree. Yeah. That's growing in the Black Spire and you have this whole... Uh, backstory for it that you've kind of invented in your mind it was actually told to me oh, by, was told to you. by a senior disney employee oh, okay so it, I, I just thought you bad example had invented that so bad example <laughs> the hope tree is the hope tree oh it is it okay. just hasn't been like publicly made available why isn't that in like the batu traveler's guide or why isn't like it's such a great concept yeah but i love finding stuff like that is basically i i, I love the story that exists inside the park like the other it was maybe it's been since the reopening i was walking through batu and i was coming up the stairs you know at the top of the stairs you got uh, ronto rosters to the left and you've got yeah. um the falcon over to the right and i realized that the planter there's a silver and blue planter and i go oh that's the turbine from the spacecraft that we take up to the star destroyer I was like, that's amazing that that is just what they're using for a planter right there. Yeah, that's oh, great. It the same turbine? I believe it is. I knew it was a turbine, but I didn't know it was for the resistance it, trench part. It looks just like the, you know how it has dual turbines on each oh, side? I think that it is oh. one of those just repurposed over there on the other side of the land. But I love going through there and playing Disneyland Where's Waldo, <laughs> right? And just like looking at all, like when people are exiting the Millennium Falcon attraction, right? There's two metal grates that are still fixed, but then there's that third metal grate that's been slid over to the side, like you're escaping through the drainage yeah. of the building. That is unbelievable storytelling. It's and so, so many people, people will never pay attention. That. Yeah, they don't it, care. Because you have to look back. Yeah, you have to. And the amount of times I've said to somebody, uh, ma'am, you don't have to carry that stroller down the stairs. There's a ramp if you just keep going around the edge of this restaurant. Like I have stopped so many people from trying to do something gnarly down those uh, stairs because they don't realize that there's that back ramp that snakes back down. But um, that's probably bad design. <laughs> it's it, it's a good design because visually it's not there, but it's a yeah. bad design because people can't oh, find no. it. Yeah. But uh, getting over to the subject matter of though of how you guys find things that are not the parks but feels natural to the channel have you guys ever gone out onto an adventure and on the way home you look at each other and go eh, do we upload this one all the time really all the time wow it's so yeah all the time <laughs> we, we put some of some of those videos on patreon we have some patreon exclusive videos we've only done that with one of them um we did one that we actually put on patreon we asked them we're like, should, should we, release we release this, this publicly? Because it just the day just didn't go how we wanted. We didn't mm. think I had to do some like real magicking in the editing to and, make and it. And the strange thing was that video they they voted yes, so it, it, which is kind of cool. Yeah, there's this community that we're giving them an exclusive piece of content, and they're like, no, share this with everybody. Yeah, that's there was great. like a few even people that were like, no, <laughs> keep it only for us. Even we're paying, but like that, that's cool. Yeah, that's that is cool. cool. That, like your the community loves that. But you know what they liked about that is that they felt like they were part of the creative experience. Yeah, yeah. And we like getting their feedback too. We do that a lot with like our thumbnails and stuff too. Like he'll make two different thumbnails and he'll be like, which one would you click on? Oh, that's great. I, I've been doing, when I do the premieres publicly, you know, anybody can show up and watch a premiere, but I'll tell Club 1313 members like premiere at four o'clock and they watch the premiere with me and then we meet up back in the discord and I go, okay, 
There's a lot of different moving parts in this video. What do you guys think the title should be? And wow. what should I put on the thumbnail? And we work together as a team figuring out like, this is the part that, you know, got me going the most. And like, I rode the, um, the Explorer canoes. Mm -hmm. And for a second, I pretended like I was going to throw the canoe off the boat. And one of the dudes is like, you post you up looking like you're going to throw the canoe. They'd be like, I rode the canoes. This is what I thought. I cannot not click on that. I'm like, yeah. you're absolutely right. Yeah. You're I, That's what I got to use. So I've been kind of doing this little like design Wait, how committee. How do you do the premieres without it being public? No, anybody can go and watch it publicly with me. Okay. But then, then my, you'll tweak it after. No, my 1313 members. Okay. So we all, like, everybody can just go over my YouTube channel and watch the premiere, right? Okay. But my members, my, we meet back up in the Discord afterwards. Okay, I got it. And then that's when they, because for a premiere, if it's just going up at like four o'clock and you know you're going to have this this group meeting, you can change that title and that thumbnail before okay, it hits five. Okay, I get it, I get it. I thought you were somehow doing it in private. I was no. Like, How do you do that? No, because <laughs> whenever you, like, when you have a video that you have scheduled or that it's private, like, oh, I'd really like to send this to the person that's in the video before everybody else sees it. Yeah. It's impossible to get it out. Like, I, you can... I hear you can add them through their email and share it, but I've never been able well, we to do, figure out how to do on that. On Patreon, we, we'll do like early access if I ever get videos done early, and we just make it unlisted on YouTube so they could go in right. so they have the you link to go watch free, it. So people can watch it with Yeah, we don't ads. put any ads on it so they could just watch it. And um, That's awesome. Yeah. But I, I, what you're talking about is like, that's, I want to say the bane of my existence, but that's the thing I think I th I think most about is, we're going to go to the park and make this video. Yeah. And it never turns out to be but, that well, way. Well, what is that video going to be titled? What is the thumbnail going to be? And it, that always changes. But, like, the one thing I've realized is if you have too many things. And we actually went to Avengers Campus last weekend. And we released the video today as of we're recording this. And we went there to eat. Oh, is that the day that you guys showed up Sunday night in your life and were so sunburned? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. I passed out so hard. I don't know what. I Yeah, I had a heat. Hey, going to the park, commuting back to L.A. and doing a live. I was watching it. And I'm like, they're heroes. Like, they are heroes. Like, we literally walked in the door 10 uh, minutes before that live stream started. I'm like, we're lucky we got here in it, time. <laughs> it was. Yeah. But um, we went there with our goal to make an Avengers Campus breakfast video. Yeah. And we would maybe do another video in the park somewhere else. But we ended up, I ended up being an idiot and showing all these Easter eggs. And then we found Loki, which was another thing we wanted to do. So we now have this video that's Avengers Campus Breakfast, but it's also Easter eggs that are hidden around the land. And it's also us finding Lo variant Loki. So then what do you make the title? And that's why I started... Because I started, like, now that fun's back in the park. Yeah. Like, now that you don't have to wear a face mask, I decided I would start vlogging. Because I do the news when the news is breaking, but I'm not going to turn every headline into, oh, my God, guys, this, yeah. you know, th this is back or this is <laughs> happening. Like, I'm just not going to do that. And the history videos I want to do, my channel's just not big enough to put that amount of work into them yet. But I'll get there. So I promise myself, I'm like, when the face mask is gone... I'll start making like fun, creative, interesting vlogs because happiness will be back. People will be able to see my face and yeah. see what I'm doing and it'll be easier to talk into the camera. So just, exact just don't go to the left side. That tunnel on the left, man. Yeah. That tunnel oh, yeah. it does some wild <laughs> stuff. It put me back in the parking lot. I don't even park. Oh yeah, we saw that one. That was that was brilliant. <laughs> that was so good. I was like, he's so smart. That was so smart because you had to plan that out ahead of time to no, that was, so, I just want to compliment yeah. you because I, I died laughing. I was like, that is so freaking funny and no one's ever done that before. Like, it's so good. Yeah, well, wait till you see what the tunnel on the left did to me the next time. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, to, to make that shot, I knew I was doing that. You show up at the parking garage and you film the second part, right? I park in the bottom of the parking garage where the EV vehicles go. I ride the escalator up oh. to the top of the garage. Oh, yeah, I did notice you were going down the escalators. I filmed me like, oh, tunnel on the left. <laughs> then when I get to the park, I go through the tunnel on the left twice to try to get the perfect shot. And then I backtrack all the way to the gate to make it look like I'm walking through the gate over to the tunnel on the right. Like, so good. A lot of. And then it's like 100 degrees out, so you're probably like sweating. <laughs> uh, I was trying not to be huffy and puffy because. Yeah. I filmed myself walking the the Trampians path, which is they got to get that tram back, man. Yeah, yeah it's a it's a lot. By the way, that's how I found you. Is the old Trampian? <laughs> I 
That was the first thing I, I found of yours. I, dude, that was the goal. It's like I wanted to do something and nobody else did it. Hopefully, it would be discoverable. Eh, not so much, but it was a worthy effort. <laughs> but what were we? Oh, we were talking about the 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 oh, the title. Um, so that video with the Loki and breakfast. And yeah. Avengers Easter eggs. I'm not sure if you saw the thumbnail. It came out today. I've been yeah, bumping you, from you've interviews been all out day around, but like, I, and I think this is probably still a mess of of stuff. But I I, I have now taken. <laughs> we Loki. made it so Loki was holding <laughs> breakfast food. Yeah, he's holding the the <laughs> breakfast food, even though he's not. It's like photoshopped. <laughs> this is better than me at the weather map. Well, I this, love this so much. Yeah, so. but that also came from like we forgot. We like to take our thumbnails as opposed to grabbing it from our video. And like we had forgotten to take a thumbnail. So it was kind of like, okay, let's try to do this. And it turned out so much better than me holding a stupid Which, by the way, normally if you forget to take a thumbnail, you can maybe go back and like order the item again and like take the thumb but you can't do that with breakfast yeah it was already yeah it's... breakfast was gone i had eaten all the breakfast it's true you it get one shot at breakfast yeah. and then it's gone so on a video like that where there's a lot of different topics going on that is exactly when i go over to my community and go what are we naming this guys you know what i mean like there's so many things yeah. and because they're not because the problem with the three of us are is we're the one that drove to the park with a specific idea in our mind. Yeah. They only know what they saw, right? They don't know this breakfast video, it's going to crush. They just know I thought Loki dressed up was awesome. You know what I mean? Like and you're like, "Oh, that's the part of the video." So I've been having them help me with that, but I like that you guys like myself you photoshop your thumbnails. You know, you put work into it you add textures that's you do all peter he's you, getting good you do different things to it just to, the sky yeah, yeah you got to try to make it look as dynamic as possible you know like <laughs> i i do a lot of things with the type i always like to try to have some part of the type behind my head yeah so there's like a level of depth there we always do that yeah it just adds like a level of like it just looks more detailed when you look at it you know but i wish that i remembered more to take photos because when you just take a screenshot, it does not yeah. have the same depth as an actual photo that you put on there. Not the same depth at all. Uh, so you guys have been doing the live stream from home on the weekends. And you've slowly been adding to the production of this. Yep. Which, by the way, is so awesome. Uh, before this, we didn't watch other people's live streams. We didn't understand live streams. A lot of them are hard to watch. I. It's not even because it's hard to. I don't know. I I guess we like watched like a Tim Tracker live stream and they had like six thousand people in there and like it was just, you know, it was hard to keep track of anybody talking because the screen was just moving so just fast. buzzing, yeah. And uh, they could only communicate with not six thousand people. So um, I think like we just didn't watch live streams, but now that like we started doing them, I look forward to it every week. It's my favorite day it's of the such week. Such a cool community. It's such like. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a cool hangout. I was going to compliment you guys that I've been watching them since you started doing these from home, and it is progressively getting more and more podcasty every week. And this last week, I know that you guys were pretty beat up from an unbelievable <laughs> day, but I, I, I think I wrote you, Peter, or at least I meant to, um, that the first half of it, there was like really good content in there. Like you guys were talking, you were sharing things, you know, you were dipping into the chats, but it wasn't overtaking it. And I think for all of us, that's the real balance of yeah. trying to not ignore the people that are there to support you and being generous and, and, you know, giving money to the channel and stuff like that, but also trying to add some sort of value to where if you're not there live, you know, cause you got a thousand people there live with you. For your all's channel, you probably want to get 10, 15, 20,000 people to watch that. There has to be something more than like, oh my God, Kathy, you're going to be at the park on Tuesday. That's great. <laughs> and you guys did a really good job of telling Kathy that's great. She's going to be there on Tuesday, but also putting some story in there. And I think that the microphone and the setup and the lighting rig, like I really, I look forward to it. I enjoy it. That is the video of each of your week that I make sure that I don't miss. Like that one goes wow. to the top of the, awesome. the heap. Which is, and I also think that because we do this together, that's the one that I feel the most kinship to. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I feel the most like I'm sitting in the room next to you versus your other videos. I'm watching you guys do something. But I don't know. Makes I, sense. I yeah. think the lives are fun. It's a nice way to fill out the content. 
you know you don't have to edit it afterwards yeah, like, yeah. it's just the time in the seat i just need to remember to eat because i'm always hangry <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah but you can't eat too much or you're either burpy or you're exactly. like dozing like, off. Or I'm hold, like i need to go to the bathroom the whole time and then i'm like oh it's finally over i can go to the bathroom yeah but you, you have the live streams down you have like the slides oh, yeah. Yours you are have, amazing. Like, all the data you have it all you know, i don't want to say scripted out but you have it like talking points yeah talking points yeah. out and uh it's tough sometimes we have that sometimes i'll have like a bunch of stuff oh you always talk do about but sometimes there's a week that nothing happens. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? There's no park news. We didn't go out anywhere because we just got back from Florida and she's been editing and I've been. You know what you do with those weeks? Hey guys, it's time for an AMA. I haven't done one in a while. <laughs> oh, like, what do you guys want to talk about? Because I'm all out of ideas. <laughs> whenever you s- Whenever you see me go AMA, you're like, bricky has got nothing this week. He's got <laughs> nothing this week. But no, on your last video, I like that you uh, you brought in a web browser and you were show you know you were looking at the uh, Marvel Hotel over in Paris. You know, like I think that there, there's a you know people have seen that. What I learned from Discord, and I'm sure you guys learned this from your Discord as well. My community, I'm not breaking the news hardly ever. Mm-hmm. They're yeah. psychos. Like they are on that website. The moment that understand. the news breaks, like they're already at Oogie Boogie Bash right now, and I don't even know what's going to happen yet. <laughs> like they're already boogieing, and I'm still oogieing. And <laughs> they- not, not, not only that, they're already at Disneyland with the new popcorn bucket. Like, How do 100%. They know this? How do they know all these things? <laughs> so, what I learned from my community is like, you know, they're really informed people, they know everything, but they want to talk about it, right? And I think that that's what the lives do is they create a space to talk about it. Although, and I watch a lot of these, you know, I watch a lot of these. I put them over in a playlist uh, that I call Disneyland uh, Podcast. And I just put everybody's weekly chit chat in there. I listen to it while I live my life. And there's just some questions that it doesn't matter the creator. It's just like, what time do you think I should show up at the park? Yeah. I don't know. What's your priority? <laughs> you know, like there's some of these repeat questions that I hear just over and over again, uh, which is always interesting to me that those are the things that exist, but not necessarily one of us would make a video out of, hey guys, this is what time I show up at the, the park. Because, you know, whenever people are like, what should I do? What should I do? My question back to them is, but what's your priority? Yeah. Right? Because every time you go to Disneyland or to the resort, there's a different priority you have that week, which for those of us that know the park, it reshapes your entire schedule. Honestly, I, I don't know. I don't think it's that bad of a question. The The reason why it's a bad question is things are changing on a daily basis there. 100%. But like, I, we should have made a video of like how to get into Avengers Campus. Because when we were there on opening day, it was a cluster. I did, and it's already well, outdated. I, I, oh, <laughs> I was yeah, going to yeah. say, it's already changed. But I'm glad changed. we didn't because it yeah. changed the next day, and then the next day after that, and it changed like the next week. Yeah. So, like, it would have been a good video if it had, you know, if they had kept the same. Yeah. Yeah. In that small little window, <laughs> it's good, but it's not, you know, I think right now is a pretty hard time to make good evergreen videos about Disneyland just because it is so in flux like everything's changing nonstop. so as a creator where you're like I would really love to put you know uh, time into this project that will maybe live past Thursday or till I put the next one on top the pile but it's just so hard because it's such a transformative place right now and uh, I think that what you guys are doing with the lives is really great because it adds sort of um, a, an ending to your week's content, right? That's like a it, good way to look at it. I, I like You're that. You're so wise. We should talk more about the videos we released that week. We, we should. Yeah, we should do that. I think I just... See? You, this is a good good advice from Mark. I, I still get kind <laughs> of overwhelmed isn't the right word, but like I'm always like, oh, we have so many like things piling up. Like we have to... I don't know. I get like stressed out about it and you need to look at it more like you're saying of like, this is like what we want to talk about. We'll get to this later which we kind of already do that but like you're totally right you're brilliant <laughs> what i i think that the the what i'm realizing from you though is that you guys are you're going more and more in that direction with mm-hmm. the lives it's becoming more like as yeah, i said more more podcasty yeah. you know but what, what you said there is brilliant that we should be talking about the videos we released that week and like how they were made or what they whatever and that's such a obvious statement but that never occurred to me yeah i think if people have 
been on that journey with you and they hear like, hey guys, so if you're wondering why we, how we got Loki holding a breakfast platter, yeah. the breakfast, we were so hungry, we didn't eat that morning, we drove <laughs> down to the park, we were worried about getting all these shots. After all the food was done and they're not serving anymore, that's the moment where we realized we didn't have the breakfast. Yeah. You're, you're 100% right. Like, I think that those are the things too that will give people um, a better connection to the content because they start to understand like you and I both know that when you watch the Casey Neistat video that he ran out on the bridge and he set up the camera then he ran oh, back 50 God. steps he ran past the camera and then he went back to the camera and picked it up and took it with him right like we watch it and understand all that a lot of people just go Casey's running on a bridge you know and it's so I think that the more you can let them know how that all happens and the thought process that goes into it it adds a level of appreciation and I think it makes watching future videos even more fun how is he so brilliant I know he's the master he and, like quit doing it for like a year and then he came back for like a week or two just teased us and it did it did it again and just as brilliant and, and all his videos were like under five minutes and they were like the most beautiful brilliant Five, and I'm like, and he's doing it in five minutes. He'd like, do a thing where like he's like un, like taking something out of the b- back of his truck, and there's this beautiful drone shot of. I know. Him, and I'm like, yeah. Thank he God like the, he has a drone controller on one hand. While he's, he's like, like parallel like, parking up. as his drone is like above him. I'm like, I would be stressing out. <laughs> when he started adding the drone into the daily vlog, I'm like, this is getting to be insane production for one guy. Thank God drones are geotagged out of Disneyland because I don't want to be riding Big Thunder worrying if my drone's oh. above me when I rip by oh, that'd it. That'd be so great, though. <laughs> no, but I I think that what um, what people like that did, though, was they really showed you the power of an independent creator, you know? And one of the things I've tried to do with my channel is I've tried to look at YouTube, because I I tried YouTube and it just didn't work for me. And I got really frustrated. So I took a year off and all I did was watch YouTube. And I found my favorite creators, I found my favorite channels, and I thought, how can I bring that into the Disneyland space? And so my creative mind is always trying to unpackage that and build that. But there are people that do amazing stuff inside of five minutes. There's not one Disneyland video that's five <laughs> minutes long unless it's just like, it's just a POV of Snow White. Clicks in at well, four and a half minutes. Let me teach you how to get a boarding pass. <laughs> <laughs> but By the way, if you want to get views, that's how you get views. You go to a new attraction on opening day and you just shoot the POV. You don't talk. No talking, no personality. You know, you go to Jurassic World opening day, 20 million views. I've done that twice. Yeah. One time it just fell right in the trash can. My Snow White video is one of my worst videos ever. I filmed it. There's no me. There's no personality. It's just the attraction. That went right in the garbage can. But when I shot the Spider-Man show twice so that my video thumbnail would say multi-camera shoot and I, I used the best audio and then I just told it like from this angle, from that angle and that one is my most popular video. Oh, Oh, wow. I didn't even know that. But there's no me in there. That's the problem. So it doesn't convert to anything. So people have no clue. <laughs> it's a false win. Oh man. <laughs> we we have friends that have that done stuff like that, and then you get a lot of subscribers out of that, and they don't watch because they they were there for Spider Man multicam, yeah, you know, stunt show. They weren't there for Mark, and you know my two favorite things that that Spider Man video gets that just drives me insane, and you guys will relate <laughs> the comments? to this. Well, <laughs> these are my favorite comments. There's been a couple of people that said it's lame that you can see that he's on wires. <laughs> Disney should have used clear rope. I, I don't. Mean, they're not wrong. I don't know <laughs> that clear kidding. rope exists. And then the other one that a lot of people say is like, it's a lot of talking. They should just show him flying. I'm like, but the talking is to bring people in to see the flying. Like, would you literally just shoot off a of flying Spider-Man unannounced? at the top of every hour like it's a cuckoo clock like that whole show those are the comments make me insane because this show is because little kids think that it's real and and him speaking and walking on the catwalk it brings people into the land right yeah you can't just fire off a spider-man without anything (laughs) else to be honest that's what i thought it was going to be until we saw it it would be so (laughs) boring if it was that yeah him like being like look i can see a roller coaster and all that stuff it's like that's the personality 
the moment I saw it flying, my initial reaction was, oh, that's amazing. They're going to put a guy behind a wall, shoot it, and then another guy pops out on the other spot. Like, I could easily be like, this is going to be phenomenal. Granted, the show is very much geared towards younger kids, but it should be. I know that's not really Spider-Man up there. I also know that that's a robot that's going through the sky. You guys have been there. Have you seen oh. kids watch that? Kids are blown away by oh, that. They like have an away. emotional reaction, but that, that's the funniest comments we've gotten on ours. like, it's just a robot flying through the air. It's just like an ana- a robot. It's just an animatronic. Just, I'm like, just a robot flying through the air. No, that's more <laughs> incredible than if it was a person. I think that the robot, just the robot flying through the air, is the most impressive thing about the entire land. Yes. Agreed. Like, and there's three different sequences he does. Have you seen the sequence where it looks like he's out of control? I think that's the yeah. most natural one. I never realized that that was. It I always thought like it was. I wrong. thought it was breaking. I didn't realize the that one was, was like different. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah, it has oh, a different interesting. It has a different audio track. Oh. Mm. And I like that one the most because who would make a robot perform something that looked like human error? Yeah. <laughs> right? So it has more of like, like the fact that the flailing actually looks realistic is phenomenal to me. Hmm. So as I don't we, think we've seen that one yet. Have we? I'm not sure. The last yeah. one we Gotta saw go back. Like, it just looked like a mess up. It looked like a rag doll almost being thrown. <laughs> I don't know. That one might have been a mess. Up. I will say this: like uh, the clear rope, that that's just laughable. But I wish there's a point, like at the end, where he like they make the sound effect, like he's shooting the web, yeah. to come down, yeah. And I wish they could have done something with that, like a white or I don't know, just a even if it was string. even if it was a false. Yeah, rope that there's a different pulley system that's going to bring him down yeah, yeah. but just the illusion of an actual web slinging happen before he crawls down the wall upside down there's also that little awkward moment where the actor kind of gets set on the wall before he starts yeah. the crawling he's got to get adjusted <laughs> not quite as seamless as we've seen in the movies <laughs> yeah no, I think that's my favorite part of the land though I really really love it and I also think that you know Avengers Campus you, you already knew that it was going to be criticized against Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and they're really two different products and I think it'll be interesting to see if you look at um, Galaxy's Edge 25 years into its opening and you look at Avengers Campus 25 years into its opening I feel like Avengers Campus will have a much more rich story two decades plus I think Galaxy's Edge is pretty set in stone for a while but Peter Kitra isn't it not killing you that they don't use the stages in Galaxy's Edge every time I'm there for the opening of Rise of the Resistance in Orlando, I was there for the press event, mm-hmm. and they had like this. We have this video up for it. She wasn't there; I was there alone. Where they had this story to, uh, event that was going throughout the land. Like you had to like go to one place and they'd be like, "Okay, we're gonna go." Uh, Vi was over in the Resistance. Business. I'm gonna go to the First Order and steal the plan. So you'd have to go over to the First Order area, and she had to sneak into the the Thai echelon and steal the plans. And then they had to go to Hondo. Like it was like this whole connected storyline. They actually had a Hondo walking around, yeah. right? And then they had it ended. They with, had like a lightsaber f- battle, yeah. and it's just why can't? I and I know in they our, do that. I know in our park on the media in Disneyland on the media event they did something above the land speeder garage where there was like blaster shots and Chewie shot oh, his wow. crossbow and oh, all. Like, oh man! So yeah, that that as part of yeah that stuff exists don't know why they just didn't put it in the land it's so interesting to me because the first time i went to the land i'm like that's a stage like i pointed out so all, many stages all the stages i'm like this place is set to be like an amazing show show piece the show never came i'm so fascinated by why they decided not to do that mark i wish i wish i could drag you to knott's berry farm when when when, <laughs> when when kicking things, and screaming when things are normal because mark refuses to go to any other theme park other than disney um when things are back to normal they have this thing called ghost town alive which from what i understand was created by the guy that was going to do the entertainment for galaxies Edge. oh wow um and it's this whole long day of event where it's interactive and you are helping guide the story and things are happening all throughout. And each day you go back, like the story could be slightly different depending on like what happens throughout the day. Oh, that's interesting. And uh, you can go in like there's a poker room and you can play a poker match to win something, whatever that was going to be Lando in galaxy's edge. And there's, you know, gunfights, there's a heist thing. There's a, someone gets arrested. Like there's all this stuff that is going on and it, it, I wish Galaxy's Edge could have had that. I hope, 
and this is what my thought was when I saw those stormtroopers come into Oga's Cantina. I'm like, they've realized the the fan reaction from Avengers Campus, mm-hmm. and now maybe it's making them rethink not doing all this stuff over in Galaxy's Edge. Uh, what you said about Knott's Berry Farm sounds interesting. When my cousin Ricky Bricky comes to town to cover knots for my channel, I'll make sure Ricky goes over there and checks all that Ricky, out. Ricky. Yeah, I'm going to be going on a vacation for a little while, and Ricky's going to be doing some knots very far coverage <laughs> this Halloween season. So I you'll be able, that. you'll be able to see cousin Ricky over on the channel. <laughs> I, I, will say that, <laughs> I will say this about the Galaxy's Edge thing, that, the Ogus thing that you experienced. I had heard about that. Before, like, when Galaxy Desert was opening. So that was already programmed in there with them. Oh, yeah. So yeah. They just haven't done it. No. That sequence had been programmed into the restaurant as, like, an interactive show. They just had never, for whatever reason, decided to do it. That's crazy. Yeah. So they actually ended up doing it and, you know, doing it right after everything had happened over at Avengers Campus. I think kind of being like, hey, we can do stuff over in our land as well. But to their credit... They really are working on the foods and drinks there. And I don't know if it'll happen in 21, but you know in 22, we're going to get all of those holidays to celebrate in the land. Oh, I can't wait. And I can't wait for that because the three of us were there for May the 5th, or I'm sorry, May the 4th, and there just wasn't that much happening no. that day. But I mean, the park had only been open. lightsaber. That was pretty exciting. That's true. That was released outside. <laughs> that's true. That was, oh well, yeah, you're right. Oh, that's, yeah. I remember, th- I was so mad about that, even though I'm not going to buy a lightsaber. <laughs> I was so mad about that because I'm like, the park just opened, everybody's buying single tickets, and now you're going to force you guys to go out <sighs> downtown Disney and burn those park hours. Yeah, it was brutal. Yeah, there were strange times. <laughs> so, any goals for the channel or anything that we're moving towards or anything that we're, we're trying to get to. They each pointed each other. I'm not going to tell him. You He's tell a better, him? He talks better than me. <laughs> That's not That's true. Not true. <laughs> um, we've wanted to go to Japan. That's something that we want to do. That's on my we, list. Yeah. We're going to do it in 2020 and then something happened. And we couldn't <laughs> do it. Uh, How do you guys plan on going? I have a specific way that I'm going to do the Asian parks. I'd love to hear what your plan is or as much as you're willing to share. You're just going to go to Japan or you're going to do them all? We're going to do them all. We want to do, like- yeah, we don't really have, I mean, we're going to do like, I want to do Hello Kitty world <laughs> and I want to do, uh, no, uh, but I, we just, we just want to soak it in. We want to try all the food and do all the rides that we don't have here. And- so you want to go there and like take your time. And- oh yeah. Cause my goal is I want to, when the world, when the globe feels safe again, I want to celebrate by going over and crushing all of the Asian parks, like just one right after the other. Oh, and I want to make tour t-shirts that has like the oh. dates of, like, Oh, that would actually, that's a great idea. I played Disney sea on June 4th. So you want to go to like Shanghai and Hong Kong and, and just all of it, all four of them, just boom, 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 boom. Just knock them all out in one shot. Um, because it's so far to go to get over there. Yeah. And yeah. I love your plan of like going over there and soaking it in and making it experiential, doing all those things. But I feel like if I got into that club, there's so much to do over there. When do you stop doing stuff? I know. Right? We're gonna have to go for at least like three weeks. Yeah, because we want to. Obvi- we man. obviously want to do other stuff besides the theme parks. Like when we're there, but right. we got to dedicate at least like three days to Disney Sea, two days to to Disney, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Disney Sea is so incredible. I haven't been there, but Ugh, everything I, I see about dreams it, about it. And I always think, man, that was almost built in the city that I live in. Like the fact that that thing was almost put in Long Beach all the time when I drive by there, I always look over and go, huh, what would that well, have been like? Now the Queen Mary is like bankrupt. So maybe they could like put something there now. Dude, the Queen Mary is in a rough, rough spot. Oh, that's so sad. It is. You guys have been on that before, obviously, right? Yeah. We've or been- we've never stayed on it. We've only done the the what's it called dark harbor yeah dark harbor the like oh which is so freaking cool yeah it's um it's such a huge vessel it's a shame that it's just rotten and falling apart so you guys want to do the the uh, japan any interest in shanghai yeah we want to do shanghai we want to do <laughs> do everything we want to do well we also want to do like beijing for like the new universal park and yeah. nintendo world and uh osaka we want to go on some cruises. We have some tickets to the Disney Wish, not the 
inaugural, inaugural yeah. meeting voyage. But we have, have you guys cruised before? Have you got? I've have you done, done it once. He's yeah. done it a few times. It's. I never thought I would be a cruising like type of person, but once you do it, it is so addicting and it's really? so fun. And if you've never, have you been on one before? No, because to me, it's always felt like getting trapped in the mall with a bunch of people for five it's days. It's not, but that's what I thought too. And I'm like, there's going to be all these kids and it's not like, what am we, we're just going to lay at the pool all day. Like, what even do you do? But there's so much to do. It's, it's honestly amazing. And I think you need to try it. I know the Florida creator, Michael K. Oh yeah. He does Disney cruise videos. And one day I was looking at his channel I'm like, wow, his Disney Cruise videos have like massive numbers behind them. Yeah. And I didn't know if that was like a specialty of his or if like that few people do it, that people really want to see what the crew. I mean, I guess that's the thing where YouTube comes in handy, right? Like before I spend all this money and take my family on this boat, yeah. what is this adventure <laughs> like? You know? Like we fall in this, like down this rabbit hole of watching Royal Caribbean cruise vloggers. <laughs> Lately, because, because we, we, have, we booked, we booked yeah, spoiler alert, we booked Royal Caribbean and I've never been. So like, we're like, what is it like? So we've been watching because the, the cruising has just started again for but Royal Caribbean. There's like Caribbean. so much to know. Like, it's as if, I mean, it's hard for you to, to, <laughs> to realize this because you live in Disneyland or even us, but people, like, I, I know people watch us because they want to see us experience stuff and they, they like yeah. us as people. But they also like it's hard to understand how to Disneyland. Oh yeah, you know I mean like yeah, like you try to figure out the the resi- like the uh, boarding groups and stuff like that from the Disney website. It's not easy. You need to see a video of how it works and see the screen grab, and you need to know the oh for order. sure. Like, if you don't know mobile ordering and you went to Avengers Campus on opening day, you, you would have been screwed. You would have just been laying in the sun, yeah. hungry, just being like, I need oh, to get out of here. How often do you guys? do a phone call or a text message with a closer friend that's like, Hey, we're taking the kids to Disneyland on Tuesday. What do I need to know? I get, I do that probably about two or three times a week. A lot. I just break it down. I'm like, this is what you got to eat. Like these are my favorite restaurants. Then everything else just. (laughs) Oh, you two with the food, man. I I was ignoring the, is it Gideon's cookies? I was ignoring that. And I was like, ah, whatever. That would look like something I would love. And then I watched you two. Sitting in a rainstorm on a picnic table, oh, ripping so a half a dozen, and oh I'm like, "Oh my god, they're so good!" Like you were the ones that got me to like give in to seeing because every time I saw it come up, I'm like, "I don't even want to know." The more I, the, the less I know about Gideon's, the better off I am. And then I watched you guys eat them, and I knew that oh, just turn the video off, Bricky. Just turn the video off. I hope it comes to Downtown Disney so bad. Oh, it looks so good. Oh, gain like an extra thirty I thought pounds. Maybe they were like Instagram, like you know, sometimes the Instagram foods that look good, right? You know, but they're not. They're incredible. <laughs> don't want to overhype it the smile on his face but when he goes they're, they're so incredible. good yeah some so of them good. are a little rich like the peanut butter one if you don't like if you're not like in love with peanut butter you might it might be too much <laughs> see that was my fear is that one bite would be like heaven but the second bite would be hell you know that you'd already have gone well, those cookies too far lasted us like 10 days yeah oh really yeah Oh, that's awesome. But then on the flip side, our last trip that we just got back from, we're like, let's buy like six of them and, you know, they'll last us. They were gone yeah. in like 24 hours. Like we ate them so quickly. That first it trip, was so sad. The first trip we went to Disney Springs and we bought them like on one of the first days. We just had them in our hotel room and like we'd come back from the, we'd go just and have just like a little a bite. Just break off a piece. A little bite. Yeah. 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 That I was like, like that. the best way. That was our goal when we brought them back this time and it was like, he was already like eating them on the plane. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Like, oh, come on. We're supposed to take those home. We only have six of these. <laughs> yeah, maybe when I go out there this fall, I'll keep you up. Have my, to. I'll keep up my streak, and I'll make a Gideon's ice cream sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that thing looked crazy. The Jack oh, yeah, Jack Dum Dum. The Dum Dum. I, <laughs> I, I said to her, I was like, "We're gonna do that one day. We're gonna credit Mark because I want to try well, that." The amount of ice cream that Ghirard- Ghirardelli gave you. Yeah, was it's Ghirardelli. So... Make sure you say it right. I, I got know. yelled at. I know. <laughs> Wait, what did I say? Gear, it's gear, Adele, It's right? gear, like okay. gears. Okay, I should know that. I'm from the Bay Area. Um, but they gave you so much ice cream. I was like, seeing you put it on there, and I'm just like, no, no. It was no. like coming out the side. No, 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 <laughs> it no, was, no. It was the whopper of ice cream sandwiches oh. for sure. It was definitely a lot. But you know what? That warm cookie that runs through the little toaster oven, man, oh, man. That with the, the creamy ice oh, cream. I need to get one of those next time. Like, that was definitely... I need to do something interesting. What will catch people's attention? You but can put that as your thumbnail. Oh, it was. 
Oh, was? Yeah. I, it, it wasn't when the video first went up, but everybody was like, I no, was no, no. I was going to message you about that. Yeah, people were like, that's what it needs to be. And then I put the type like Jack Jack uh, Num Num, like ice cream <laughs> sandwich. Uh, but that's the type of thing where if you didn't want to do something that ridiculous, just get in a Num Num cruising over to gear delis and get in a scoop of vanilla ice cream and just doing it all a mode Oof. what i mean that was a awesome dessert awesome dessert um so as we're wrapping up guys i, I want to thank you all <laughs> for your time yes thank you we've only been talking for five minutes what are you talking about uh, i mean i can keep going if you don't want to stop i never <laughs> stop you, you know as soon as we break down like the podcast is going to keep going as soon as i hit stop like <laughs> and and what i'm enjoying about doing this is yeah. when you talk to other creators in this space it's like it's it's one thing to try to figure out youtube that's a wild animal but try to figure out the wild animal of disneyland and theme parks and the space that we all kind of live in it's it, there's it's definitely really really fun getting to know you guys getting to talk shop and you know like swap in like you know facts and tips and how you guys are doing stuff and you know whenever you guys are like we really enjoyed that i'm always impressed that you watch and i really appreciate the compliment because i really like what you guys are doing and i I see why your channel is where it's at. Like I watch it all the time. I'm like, they've got that it factor. And I love that. Well, well thank you. I appreciate that. Cause I, I still feel like I don't know <laughs> what I'm doing. And yeah. when people like come up to us and they're like, you inspired us to start our channel. I still feel like we're the babies and like, or not the babies, but like, I'm like, we just started like in, it's we don't know always what we're so doing. Humbling, like, well, let me ask you this. Yeah. Cause in life, when I've realized that I'm more comfortable in like second or third place, Whenever I've won something and whatever, when I was in the arts community, like if I sold the most money that weekend, like I just didn't feel comfortable with being in first place. Are you guys slightly uncomfortable with like how fast it's gone and how quickly the numbers have built? Because you seem like, I mean, I saw the thumbnail where you're holding up 150,000 balloons, but are you guys, <laughs> yeah, that un was fun. are you guys uncomfortable? You make it sound like there was like 150,000. Well, I finally like, threw those away because you were coming over. Those have been saying. <laughs> hey, I would have said, can I borrow the wood and the zero so I can celebrate 10, <laughs> I was like, 000? oh no, we got to get rid of these. They, they're like deflated, like in the hallway here. <laughs> you know, when I was going down the street, I saw 150,000 <laughs> balloons flying by. <laughs> wasn't me. Wasn't me. No, nah, I couldn't be them. I don't know. It, it, it does. I at, at some point I do feel like I want to say embarrassed, but like we are the new people, and like there's been pe there's people that we watch like Magic Journeys or yeah, you or just like these people. Like you guys have been here for longer than us, and I I feel like it's almost like a a guilt, a weird guilt. Like I understand that. I, I don't feel like we're doing when when I watch your videos. I'm like, how is he doing? that like you have a great opinions about every single thank you. You, you i mean that that makes a good podcast or a radio like, like you just like have opinions about everything and it's like not slight opin opinions it's like strong smart <laughs> thought through opinions but everything. strong opinions are are my strong point <laughs> yeah and you're funny and like you know like that opening of that video going through the left tunnel is like genius um and like i don't know so there's like a guilt of like how did we get here so fast when other people might not have? And I can completely understand that. Yeah. I, I, I get that. That That is in my personality as well. And, you know, somebody who's got, I'm in last place. I have the worst numbers out of all the people that do this regularly. Um, it is so frustrating, so humiliating, and, and it, it just, it drives me insane that i just can't get that public facing number that's that validates me right mm -hmm. but i know my personality i know that if i was sitting in your spot i'd be like uh you know uh it's just a thing that happened like i don't know like i i understand where you're at because when i've been in those moments before i felt the exact same way the exact same way and i think a bit of me being at the bottom, it keeps me scrappy and it keeps me going. And I don't know if it all of a sudden it exploded. That would be a that would be an interesting thing because then I would be like, oh, which one of these dumb ideas worked? <laughs> you know, like which one should I keep doing? So I think there's a lot of great talent. There's great responsibility. There we go. <laughs> yes, Spider Man's dad. Yes. You know what I mean. Or his uncle or whoever that, I think it was the alcoholic said that, that is, to that's him. That's very true. <laughs> no, but I, I see you guys sometimes kind of, 
you know, kind of wince at that a little bit. And I was just curious to ask you about it. I don't know. It. It's just like we feel like we, I don't know. I, I, I guess it, maybe it's <laughs> in, insecurity of I don't think I'm that great of a, like, you know, like, I don't think our videos are the best videos out there. Like, you know, I, I watch, I, 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 I've seen that, like, I, I feel like, um, I forget where I saw this. It was some documentary where they were talking about, like, the, the people that are the most successful usually have like imposter syndrome ever dude. The, and, and I feel like I have imposter syndrome, but not because I'm, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know how we lucked. See, I feel, see, I, I can't give us credit. I, I get that. And I think that is part of what makes you approachable and relatable, you know, because if you're sitting back being like, damn, yo, we, we just stacking subscribers. We're crushing that Disneyland. Like that's not appealing ever. But as somebody who's interviewed hundreds of creative people, imposter syndrome is what makes us keep ticking, right? Like I've talked to so many people that have done monumental things in art and music and skateboarding and business. And it's rare that you find somebody that will admit that they did it. Right. And, and sometimes it's a hard thing for me because I'm like, look, man, the audience knows you're Shepherd Fairy. Don't try to act like you're not Shepherd Fairy for the next 90 minutes. Yeah. Like you, you got to give them a little bit about, hey, you're the guy from my generation that's going to go down in the art history books to define my generation. Like you can't act like that's not a thing that we all know that's happening. And, you know, you know, this from interviewing, it's like sometimes you got to kind of get people to do ownership of what their success oh, yeah, yeah. is. And that's hard because we don't always want to admit. But do you, do you see, I'm t- turning the interview. On oh, here. do it. I can do, do this all do, day. Do you watch like other YouTubers or whatever? And you get the imposter of like, how is like, it's the way I feel about Casey or like, uh, most recently, uh, most recently Bo Burnham, uh, inside on Netflix. Oh, I watched God, brilliant. him. He filmed this comedy special in, one small room during yeah. the pandemic. It looks like he's in a bedroom. So good. And it's better than anything I've ever st- like I know. After the thing was over, we looked at each other, we're like, we're never gonna do anything it makes as good f- as that ever in our life. Like, how did he shoot it with all the lights and the cameras and all like it's so creative and so uh, taking out even like the brilliance of the comedy that he's delivering and how meta and uh, it's just the technique of it. Yeah, it's just the technique of it alone. And he doesn't have another person there. It's just him. I don't know. He's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, I, I watch stuff all the time and I'm sometimes baffled at what is popular and what cuts through. And I try not to let that change who I am. Right. Because sometimes I'm totally. like, does all the effort, extra effort count? You know, when you, cause there is a thing about popularity, right? That once you get to a certain level of popularity, you can kind of do whatever because people have either bought into you or they haven't. So you don't have to break your neck doing super creative things because people are just going to show up because you're now represented as a brand name. And sometimes I look at things and I try not to let like, this is massive amount of numbers. I do this for a living. I know there's not a lot of effort behind this. I can't go over to the dark side because because it worked for them doesn't mean that it's going to work for me. But is there a level of frustration behind seeing well, that? I'm not even saying of like something like that. Where it, that seems like you're not looking up to what's being created. You're just looking up to the number. What I'm saying is like, do you it, it, are there people that you watch that you're like studying or not even studying, but just like I'm never going to be this good. Like, do you know what I mean like in terms of the content quality? Do you know what I mean? I never. Okay, let me rephrase. That's already going to be like bad English. (laughs) I don't tell myself that I can't do it, but I look at it and go, I would strive to get there, you know? And I definitely look at outside sources and say, there's a magic here. And if I can keep taking stabs at this and I can take that magic and wrap it around my personality and my subject matter, that to me feels like a winning solution. And, uh, I do that over and over again because I'm inspired by everything around me. Yeah. But to tell myself I'll never be that good, I don't think I'd let myself say that to me. Okay, that was probably bad wording. It's just like, I don't know, it just smacks you in the face of like, oh, wow. Yeah, sometimes you look at stuff and you, and you, you just can't help but like, 
wow like i'm <laughs> so far off from whatever that just was yeah like I'm really impressed. It's imp- cute what we do, but we'll never. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I'm really impressed by people that can get a lot into sub five minutes. Yeah. That blows my Insane. mind. That's a challenge. Because when somebody does something that's five minutes, that feels long, like that not feels long, like get over, because that's a horrible place to be. But when you watch like a, a Casey video um, or like David Dobrik, where they're just, they're ripping through topics and when it's over with, you feel like a contact buzz of fun and you go, that video was only four and a half minutes long. I like, don't understand. how did they fit that much fun into four and a half minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Like that, that type of thing just blows my mind because it's just like from editing, it's so much whittling it down, you know, when, cause when you watch some of these guys videos too, they'll go to 10 different locations there'll be like six different stories inside of that. It's like, so you filmed that for two hours and you somehow had the ability to, to cut out the best 35 seconds from that moment. Yeah. Like how do you, how do you just keep carving it down to like, does it still make sense? Can you still tell the story inside of 35 seconds and realize that we went over to our friend's house and stole his furniture and he freaked <laughs> out. You know what I mean? But that's yeah. a big idea to get down to like a 35 second yeah. clip and then on to the next thing. All right, friends. Thank you guys so much for your conversation, for for talking with me. Hopefully we could do this again sometime. Yeah, this yeah. was so this much was fun. fun. There you go, fellow citizens of Disneyland. Another conversation with a, a set of creators that are really, I think, doing a, a great job of taking so many people on adventures and doing things they want to do. You know, when I first met Peter, he came up to me in a live stream to say hi and, and to say that he'd watch the channel, which was just like so completely nice of him to do and uh i just messed up their name because that's just how my brain is when i'm live like things are jumbled up sometimes and i called them extraordinary adventures and he said no no it's just ordinary adventures and i remember driving home that day and being like why would you use the word ordinary why would you down sell your product like oh it's just an ordinary adventure but it was so brilliant and so right because so many people do identify with what's special about me. I'm just a regular person. And I think what YouTube and podcasting and this movement of new entertainment has done, especially over the last year with the pandemic, is it has shown people that they can find creators that are ordinary, regular people just like themselves that they can actually identify with and relate to. So uh, props to Peter for, for seeing the big picture when I'm just looking at the thing that's shiny right in front of my face. All right, friends, the creator series on Disneyland for Designers continues next week with our 70th episode when Dylan from Theme Park Obsession comes and sits next to me. A little interview about him, but a whole lot of conversation about theme park design and the future of Disneyland and how it could grow inside of the little town of Anaheim. Friends, until the next time I see you walking through Disneyland, having the time of your ordinary life, I will see you back here on the podcast with more Disneyland stories. Thank you so much to Club 1313 for making today's episode possible. This is my first podcast. Is it? Yeah. Wow. I didn't want to tell you in the beginning, but now I feel like I could tell you. Well, <laughs> how many have you done, Peter? A lot. Like I've, a few hundred, right? Uh, he does doing, one daily. Yeah, I've been doing one daily <laughs> for at least three years, if not four years. Well, not the weekend, so five, <laughs> days, a five days a week. So we're in that same... So you're in the hundreds of Although episodes. now I'm doing it three days a week. So yeah. Well, thank you for being my first. I had a lot of fun. I was actually really <laughs> nervous, but it was a lot of fun. Well, I what it. I was just going to say is you, there's li- between the three of us, there's a couple thousand <laughs> podcasts. So you can just jump right in the middle of that number. <laughs> there we go. You, you are the, the, the one Oreo between. <laughs> <laughs> Two worn out cookies. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to ask you another question. Sure. From from a podcaster's perspective, podcasting, we exist inside the imagination, right? Yeah. 
if right now I tell everybody that we're on top of the roof, we're on top of the roof. I mean, we are. <laughs> yeah, what are you? What do you mean? Exactly. <laughs> it, but if we're in the basement, like we really are, then we're in the basement. <laughs> um, how different was it for you to start getting in front of the camera after somebody who had just, because with podcasting, you can be in whatever room you want, wearing whatever you want. Like you literally just have to show up and have a voice. Video is a whole other animal. Was that a hard thing for you to get used to being in front of a camera instead of hiding behind a microphone? It, it is tough because, well, I don't like looking at myself. I don't like watching myself. It, it's, I, I guess probably the hardest part is, well, the, I guess I'm <laughs> trying to pass the question to her, but you don't want the, that answer. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's tough. I don't have a good answer for this. I'm I sorry. look at your face more than you do. I'm the one editing. Yeah, well, I was, I was just going I was, I was <laughs> to say I don't that like looking at my face either. <laughs> the problem that she has, like, it's not when we're filming, like, if we film here, like, in the house by herself, it's no problem. But, like, when she's in the park walking around with the camera shot. On, oh, like, yeah, I get anxiety. I still haven't gotten used to it. Because people are, like, looking that way. and Oh, so if you're in the theme park, yeah. it doesn't bother you having the camera up? For me, it it does because i don't really like, i don't like the atten- like i'm not like an attention seeker like i don't like it's like you got to talk a little bit louder so like you could yeah. talk over the music and it's like people then people look at you and i i feel like there's some bloggers that like to fr- be the center of attention and be like louder she that's not her oh i try <laughs> so hard not to get noticed <laughs> but i yes but i feel like through doing this it is like i said earlier it's given me a lot more confidence in it has myself to, uh, like I don't know. So in that aspect, I like it. But then in the moment, sometimes I get, I have to like take a second, like I'll like hit him. And I'm like, we have to like go into like a corner over here for a second and just let me like, you need to reset. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, two things that you have to learn in what we're doing that I think a lot of people don't even consider this. You have to get used to the sound of your own voice. Yep. (laughs) And you have to get used to like seeing your face from the non-bathroom mirror angle. I'm like, that's what I look like? There's a way I look at myself in the mirror. I'm like, you're a good looking man. I never see that guy in my videos. I don't know where that guy goes He's until there. I brush my teeth. But like, you know, there are definitely things we, like I hate my teeth. And sometimes the angle that my camera's at, I'm like, what? You look like a Halloween pumpkin talking to these people. And it literally like, you just have to like, get a, a, a thick skin over that wound and you just kind of got to get used to it and after and i'm sure you're like this now peter like my voice does not bother me at all i've edited my voice i've talked into microphones i've heard it enough to where it is what it is and i'm getting that way with seeing me in the park right like Mm -hmm. it's almost like i'm watching this character that i'm editing and doing things and sometimes i guess maybe for like self-preservance i'm like Oh, he did a pretty good job. It's you, you idiot. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like, it takes a while to get used to seeing yourself yeah. outside of yourself, right? Like an out- external body experience and not be like, oh, I'm not going to upload this because I hate the way I look. <laughs> like, I always have stuff all over my shirt, even though I always go into the bathroom and make sure there's no beard, dandruff, or weird hairs. As soon as I hit record, they fall from the sky on my blouse. <laughs> I do not understand. But you got, you got, a, you got a buddy there. To, to, to check your blouse yeah. yeah a lot of the time he leaves me hanging though I'll, or i'll leave him he'll have like something in his teeth and he's like that was there the whole time and i'm like i'm sorry i'm just focused on holding this heavy camera i didn't notice it, <laughs> it is I'm a sorry. pretty heavy camera <laughs> uh peter uh, having a beard and tasting food no easy task because i look at myself all the time like you idiot you have ice cream dripping out of your yeah. beard or your mustache the, the hard too is is like avoiding the pitfalls of like when you you want to like put your your hand in front in front of your mouth to like block people from seeing food in between your teeth, and you can't really do that like no. if you're reviewing food or or whatnot. I, I will say this last secret to end on: the good thing about the pandemic, the mask, <laughs> the mask covered. The mask, I was yeah. just thinking that, and I forgot. It's like it's like ripping the bandaid off. Now it's like, oh no, people have to like see my face again. <laughs> oh, well, no. not only that. <laughs> I'll admit to this. I don't, you don't have to, but maybe you'll bond with me. There have been times when I took the audio of what I said 
and put it under a clip where I'm not oh, saying that. Yeah. Uh, because you can't That's see my mouth. That's happened before. Yeah. yeah. Like, this is the, this shot looks better, but I like messed up my words. Yeah. So I would take the clear run and just put it underneath the, that yeah, one. I've done that before. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. No, you never knew. Now you know. <laughs> We're not doing that now. There's no way now you Now we look. can't mess up ever. No. I, I was told my, I told Beth, I'm like, you know, the one thing I'm going to miss about these masks is being able to edit the audio any oh, way no. that you want to. <laughs> and for a lot of times, I would, I'd be out at Downtown Disney or in Bonavista Street or, or Touch of Disney. I'd be out there like squinting because if I have sunglasses on and a mask yeah. or maybe a hat, like I might as well be the invisible man. Like there's <laughs> literally none of me there anymore, you know? Like I might as well put on a Darth Vader helmet and just rip through the park because you're definitely not seeing any human motions at all. I feel like that's the one benefit of all the B roll that he shoots is like sometimes I could just put that B roll over like a certain mess up or yeah. so, like the audio and you never know like that it's and not then you, the right you Frankenstein thing. a quote out of like three different takes. Oh yeah. And oh, nobody yeah. notices because all the, time. the B rolls rolling over. Oh yeah. As long as that background noise is consistent, yeah. yeah. You sound like a poet. That's why a lot of times because I'm by myself, I'll shoot with that multi camera where I'm shooting yeah. out the front of my iPhone and out the backside of it because that way if I do something dumb or I like oh, look there we the, go I always have coverage right so it's like smart people will be like uh oh you're the camera's going back and forth a lot I'm like well you also don't know that I had like a custodian that would not leave me alone that was like chasing <laughs> me through Disneyland <laughs> or you know a kid's like staring at you in the back of your lens like all right time to look over at what I'm looking at 